Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the Royal Roads University International Undergraduate Case Competition Finals. I want to welcome everyone here today, both in-house, outhouse, and externally on the web. We are streaming live. I'd like to first take a moment to congratulate our four teams. You may not know them, but you will know them by number. That's Team 16, Team 11, Team 5, and Team 3. And they did a very fantastic job over the past two days, and we, they definitely deserve to be in this finals. And we're really looking forward to see what they can produce for today. I'd like to take another minute to introduce our judging panel. Uh, our lead judge, Neville Grigg, from Agenda Office Supplies. And Mr. Elliot Freeman, Management Consultant. And Mr. Randall Hollins, Shiner Capital Group. Mr. Greg Mikkeljohn, co-founder of Enrollment Resources. And Ms. Marlene Tolson, pre founding president of the Township <laughs> Committee Arts. And Mr. Brian Bowman, principal of Constant Improvements. Again, congratulations to our team, and I'd like to present to you our first team, Team 16. surrounded with rich history and luscious landscapes. Since their inception, they have moved into the top 100 golf courses in the country and have won awards for this achievement. However, in recent years, they have taken some hits financially and with their success. However, with the right determination and just a little bit of help, there is no reason that St. Thomas Golf and Country Club can not only become a thriving business, but a thriving one. Good morning. We are Radical Consultants, and we thank the board members, management team, and supporting staff for letting us be here today. As a brief introduction, my name is Ryan McGuire. This is Sarah Crompy, Dylan Cox, and Aaron McCall. To look ahead to our presentation, we are first going to do an internal and external analysis surrounding St. Thomas today. We are then going to identify the main problem surrounding the business. We will then look at some alternatives to solve this problem, ultimately recommend one of them, and then talk about an implementation plan that, let me tell you, we are excited about. So moving into the internal and external analysis, we're first going to start with a SWOT. So first, looking at some strengths. One of the main strengths we have identified, such as in the intro, is they are, are an award-winning golf course. Many people know about St. Thomas's, and they're really start, excited about the strength and great course that it offers. Another strength is the management experience. Many of the people on this team have managed many different things, including many different golf segments, so they really have this strength in their employees to really help with their management. However, with any business, there are some weaknesses. So looking at some weaknesses, one of the main weaknesses we've identified with St. Thomas is their really poor financials that we're going to outline in our quantitative analysis next. Moving to the next one, there is this decreasing membership surrounding the golf course. There's the deteriorating clubhouse, as you've outlined for us. There's this seasonal demand, and what we mean by that is there's only a limited amount of time when memberships are coming into that clubhouse and coming into golf because of the seasonal demand around the sport itself. And then finally, there is this young management staff that has a little lack of experience in some of the areas we're looking at. However, with weaknesses, they have some great strengths that lead into these great opportunities. So one of the big opportunities we identified is they could host some pro tournaments as they have in the past to really get people to the course itself and really let people see what <coughs> St. Thomas has to offer. And finally, another opportunity is golf participation has surpassed hockey participation in Canada. A lot of people are really moving to play golf, and the great thing about golf is it has such a wide age range. There's juniors all the way up to people 80 years old who can still play the sport. 
So with these great opportunities, doesn't mean there aren't threats. One of the threats is the stagnating market. Right now, the people out flowing from playing golf matches the people in flowing. So there's really no new members surrounding the sport. Another is the economy. In 2008, St. Thomas really took a big hit because people just couldn't afford to come to them and really play the sport. And finally, another threat is weather. Being a golf course, weather can really affect whether people really want to come out and play. So weather's going to be a big threat. So after looking at this qualitative analysis, I'm going to pass it off to Aaron to talk about some quantitative analysis. All right, thank you, Ryan. All right, so with the working capital of 344000 that was a drop from your 2010 of over, almost 31%. So that was a huge drop in working capital for your golf course. And then the accumulated revenue over expenses had a drop of 12%. And then moving in, uh, we have the percent of revenues here. So you can kind of see where your golf course is making its money relative to the other uh, revenue streams for your company. And the change that you saw, the pro shop was the only one that had a slight increase over 2010, but the pro shop doesn't have that high uh, variable profit margin. And I wanted to really focus on that for you guys because uh, the golf course and the food and beverage industry, there's high variable profit margins. You have these high costs built in, these high fixed costs. So the more you can get those services to be performed on and people interested in those, those fixed costs will become a less of a burden on your financial statements. So you can really start making with the low variable costs. Once you start selling, once you get those fixed costs paid off, you really start making some money on those. Right, right? So now we've really gone through this internal and this external analysis. I'm going to pass it off to Dylan Cox to really talk about the problems surrounding St. Thomas. So as you can see, St. Thomas really is having, the main problem right now is they're having trouble generating profit, which leads to long-term sustainability. So we've identified some subsidiary issues to go right along with it. Uh, problem g generating profit. The first subsidiary issue is they really have a high fixed cost and they really need to mitigate this because the cost during off season is the same during the on season. Another subsidiary issue is there's a decreased membership currently. Over the past five years there's been a really a decrease in membership each year. There's also a lack of the core competency. The restaurant or the clubhouse and the golf course itself really don't act as a differentiator between other golf courses. With these problems, we've identified three alternatives that could work really well for St. Thomas. The first alternative would be to transition to a public golf course. Currently, St. Thomas has membership fees, so an alternative could be to transition to a public course to allow any member of the community to come and actually play golf at this course. The second alternative would be to build an attached hotel to make St. Thomas somewhat of a tourist attraction to draw people in from the surrounding areas. A third alternative would be to renovate the clubhouse, and that would offer um, new memberships and also be able to host new events to really increase profits year round. So some criteria to really go through these alternatives. First would be, does it create a core confidence? Second, does it build year round revenue, not just focusing on the year or the summer months for the, the golfing season? A third, does it generate good profits? And also, does it increase memberships? Ryan, let me know how the first alternative works out, creating the public course. Well, creating the public course really would create a core competency in that you really are a big golf course, and it really would generate some profits. But some area, areas that's going to fail at is it's really not going to build that year-round demand. It's still just a golf course, and there's only a limited season. And finally, it's really not going to increase membership because there's not going to be any membership. What about the second alternative of creating an attached hotel to make it a tourist attraction? How's that going to line up? Well, the attached hotel will build some year-round demand and maybe increase some memberships because then people have a little more to go to. But again, it's really not going to create a core competency for St. Thomas. So how about our third alternative of renovating the clubhouse? How does that match up? Well, I think if you look at, look at the chart, it speaks for itself. It's green across the board. It's going to create that core competency, and it's really going to match up with what St. Thomas wants to do. So as Brian had just outlined, for our recommendation, we're going to renovate the existing clubhouse that's already structurally sound. It just needs some... Uh, improvements for the interior. So we're going to also offer an individual clubhouse rate aside from the golf course rate. So not only can a member become a member to the clubhouse and the golf course, but if they just would like to go and eat at this beautiful new clubhouse, then they could choose to do so by paying a membership fee. Also, we're going to offer corporate rates. So corporate, uh, corporate companies can then offer these plans to their employees. We really want to create a four-star <coughs> dining experience in this location. So really these people the customers would be business casual when they come, and they're really going to take pride in coming to this location and eating. It's also going to be an event space for wedding and corporate events. So uh, St. Thomas already hosts 
certain events throughout the year. So we're just playing off of this and really making it a more beautiful attraction and more marketable to the consumers. So to justify this, we're really going to create a core competency around the clubhouse experience. Currently, a lot of the members don't take pride in the clubhouse. They don't even want to show off the downstairs locker room to any of their guests. They're really, they don't take pride in it. So really remodeling the clubhouse, their members and the community are really going to take pride in this new location. It's also going to generate year-round profits. Consumers are going to come to the clubhouse year-round to eat because it's going to be a four-star dining experience. And they're really going to take pride in eating it. Also, we're going to increase memberships. Like I just said, we're going to increase uh, the opportunities and the options for consumers. So not only will they be able to only have the golf option, but they can also have the clubhouse option as well. We're also going to diversify our revenue. We're going to have the restaurant, the event space, as well as the golf course. So that's really going to help promote the season or reduce the implications of the seasonal demand. So to tell you how we're going to um, implement the strategy, I'm going to pass it back to Sarah. So to talk a little bit about our plans in renovating the clubhouse. First, we're going to put Rob Mason, your current general manager, in charge of overseeing the renovations. This is something he already has experience doing, so we're confident that he's going to do well with the St. Thomas project as well. We want to really look at renovating the restaurant, the locker rooms, and the event space, which we'll kind of expand upon a little bit later. We want to renovate to make everything top of the line finishes to really attract new members and these corporate members that are going to be looking for these high-end finishes. We also want to create an expanded event space that will have catering facilities that can host things such as wedding or corporate events. So to talk more about the memberships that we're planning to offer, first in looking at the individuals. We will offer these clubhouse memberships, which are new to St. Thomas, that will really just be, act, be able to provide access to the restaurant and the event space. We will also be offering the combined membership that will offer access to the clubhouse as well as the golf course. And then we will also be looking at doing event space for rentals for weddings or things like um, family reunions or things of that nature where they could rent that space for free and only paying the uh, catering costs. So in looking at our corporate customers, we'd be offering them combined access to the course and the clubhouse. The membership cost would be based on the number of employees that would need access to the facility. And we would be charging $2,000 per employee. This would largely be sales employees, we imagine it being, for these corporate companies. We would also be offering them restaurant access for sales outing if they wanted to have a sales call over lunch. <coughs> and this would also include the free rental of the event space for things such as conferences or retreats. So to take a look at our target segments a little bit closer, first we're looking at the individuals. And for those individuals, we're looking at a demographic between the ages of around 30 to 60. These would largely be professionals playing the sport of golf. We would be looking in the St. Thomas area and really surrounding areas, but not too far outside the St. Thomas geographical area. And we're looking at an annual household income of about $75,000 per year. To discuss the corporate customers, we're looking at small to medium-sized businesses. We're largely targeting those businesses with less than 100 employees. We're again looking in the St. Thomas area, but corporate customers can come from a little bit further outside of this area. So we're also looking in the London area and the Toronto area. And then finally, we're looking at sales-based organizations. So those companies that really are taking out clients on sales calls. So another thing that's really important in this implementation strategy is rebranding St. Thomas. We'll have this new beautiful facility and we wanna make sure we're really capitalizing on that. So the first thing that we're gonna look at are the member costs. So the clubhouse membership is gonna be $500, whereas the combined membership for the clubhouse and the golf course is gonna be $3,600. The event cost for non-members is also really important because we still want it to be available to the public, but we want it to be at an, kind of an accelerated rate, an increased rate. So we wanted to look at charging $1,000 for the event space plus a $20 average plate cost, which is above our general average for our members of about $17.50 per plate cost. So, so some other things that are really important in this are looking at that core competency. So what we wanted to do is to build the core competency around the beautiful club, clubhouse. This is really going to become central to all of the revenue gener generating activities of St. Thomas. And this is going to contribute to the superior image of the St. Thomas Country Club. 
So we wanted to contribute to this by the dress code. So making it business casual, slacks, khakis, collared shirts to maintain the professional atmosphere at this clubhouse. And then in addition, we wanted to ha charge an average plate cost of about $17.50 for members. Again, a little bit above the average plate cost at maybe your local restaurant, but we wanted to maintain the superior image. So to talk a little bit about our marketing. So what we want to do is that in April, we will be hosting our grand opening, which is a really exciting time. We want it to seem kind of like a party with free appetizers and cocktails for sale. For our individual clients, we want to look at offering tours of the facility, showing them that all this new clubhouse has to offer. And we also want to offer them 20% off at our restaurant to show them how fine dining really looks at this restaurant and give them a chance to come in and see what the experience is like. For our co corporate customers, we want to look at creating brochures that can kind of go out in a mailing campaign, which is very efficient. But we also want to take the time to build a closer relationship with these clients by offering free rounds of golf at the St. Thomas Co um, Country Club by really getting them a chance to come out and see what they're going to be able to have and all the amenities that we offer and the potential that it could have for their business. So to take it over with the timeline, I'm going to pass it off to Aaron. Thanks, Sarah. Uh, so we're currently, you're currently in February with your uh, golf course, and with the February to October, it's going to be a continuing operations plan. We said the membership fees are locked in for those times, so there's no editing in the membership fees. But preparing those plans to make sure that the rollout is a great rollout and people really get behind this in the community and wanting to come in. October, obtain a loan of $750,000 and transition Amanda Coding into handling the event management. And then by January, the construction being complete, soft opening for members, and then training the employees for that food service management so we have top employees to really service that four-star restaurant field that we're wanting to go for. And then in April, we'll have the grand opening. This is for everyone to bring in, attract those new corporate business people in, and all the new members into your golf course. And then June, start of the golfing season, host a golf scramble for individual and corporate teams, kind of show them what you guys have to offer as a golf course and the other amenities attached to that as well. So Sarah's going to go into some cheesy uh, objectives. So I know as the council of the St. Thomas Country Club, you're very concerned about the strategic objectives of this proposal. So we wanted to take it back to our original problem, which was to increase membership by 30%. We wanted to make sure that we had a large goal to reach because we are confident that with this clubhouse, you're going to be able to reach new heights. We also wanted to set the goal of becoming profitable in 2013. As Aaron outlined, currently the profitability numbers are not looking so good. And so we know that this has to be an important objective for this country club to be sustainable over time. And then finally, we wanted to look at smoothing out the seasonal demand. We know this is a huge issue for your business currently. So to change the business model to offer revenue from food operation that really balances the golf course operations and the revenue that you're receiving from that, we see this as a huge strategic objective of this proposal. Aaron, do you want to continue on with your financial analysis? Yes. Thank uh, you. So the loan would be a $750,000 loan, as I said earlier, and a 15-year loan at 5%. So the total cost of this loan after you're paying interest and bringing it back to uh, this year, it's going to be a million three hundred twelve thousand five hundred dollars. That's going to be the interest you're going to be paying on the loan, <clears throat> and then operating profit of twenty five percent. The two thousand eleven, the two thousand fifteen. So we're trying to increase those profits up. A three year uh, three year analysis on this. Uh, in the first three years, you're going to have an operating profits increase of 277,433. So that's the cumulative operating profits in those first three years. So the first three years of the loan, so 37% of that loan principal is going to be covered in three years. So that's just 20% of the loan line. And that's just going to keep adding on to it. So it's really building on that loan. It's going to really get paid back to your, comp your golf course very quickly. And then uh, on the contingency, if St. Thomas is not showing a profit after that third year of grand opening, we suggest that the golf course seek a buyout. You know, the golf course uh, this is a lot of money invested. You've got to have a way to pay off this loan. It's a huge step, but really the only way for this golf course to really make a sustainable income and move on into years forward is taking this risk. It's worth it because we don't see this needing to be there, but the buyout will be the option. Ryan, you go into uh, the obstacles and risk. So I'm sure as a counselor you're really worried about this loan size. But when the farm's failing, you bet the farm. 
Right now, it's really in a financial struggle, and you've really got to do something big and really go all in to make sure that St. Thomas really builds up. And that's where the contingency is of with the buyout, is that you're going all in, and we're really confident in this implementation. So we really don't see that loan size as being a risk, because we really see increase, an increase in operating profits. The lack of corporate interest. The great thing is London and Toronto themselves are really surrounding areas, and we're really on the rise from that recession in 2008. So corporate people really want this nice place to really look for, to really bring some customers as we outline. And finally, the lack of the individual interest. As we outlined in the timeline, in 2012, there's really going to be this marketing to the current members that they're really going to renovate this clubhouse, and it's really going to be a great place to be. So we really don't see any of these obstacles as we outline as being true obstacles, as long as the implementation plan stays as well, stays as we've outlined it. So to finally wrap it up with a conclusion, we've, sur we've outlined that the main problem surrounding St. Thomas Golf and Country Club today is how does St. Thomas generate profits and become sustainable. Our recommendation was to renovate the clubhouse and build this core competency around the experience and around this four-star experience that we've outlined in implementation. And with this implementation, you're going to see around $277,000, $433,000 in operating profits. We believe with this great implementation and this great strategy that St. Thomas can not just become a successful business, but a thriving one. What are your questions? Um, your your long-term sort of build it and they will come plan is, is all very nice, but I'm concerned about the fact that you've had a quarter of a million dollars worth of losses over the last two years, and we're continuing to lose money, and I'm afraid that we're not actually going to make it until you've even started construction, much, much less make it past the, the new, new clubhouse. Tell me about your short-term plan to stem the losses. The short-term plan is really to just continue as well. You can't, we've really identified that doing really small things up front's really not going to keep the business going, and you've really got to bet it all in, and betting it all in does take a little bit of time. So with the constriction so let me total, jump in there right now. You're losing two hundred thousand dollars a year. What are you going to do tomorrow to stem the losses? Currently, currently, St. Thomas is hosting tournaments, and they're having variable um, success in those tournaments. So things such as scrambles and other events for the community and for the members to invite their friends to come in and take part in these events could be an option. No cost cutting measures. The cost cutting measures, you've uh, already implemented several cost cutting measures and continuing to cut those costs. The golf courses live and thrive on providing a quality product and keep cutting costs. It's just going to drive the reputation of your golf course down. Brian, do you have any questions? Absolutely. Um, can we go to the membership fees? Currently, my members are paying approximately $1,000 when you take off the promissory note. You presented that I'm going to be able to get a clubhouse membership for $500. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? We yeah, have. Correct. Okay. But a corporate membership is going to cost me $2,000 per employee. Mm -hmm. Why does a corporate pay four times what an individual does? Why would I even bother if I was a corporation? Well, actually, the $1,000 fee that you're referring to is the initiation no, I'm only, fee. I'm only dealing with the clubhouse memberships now. $500 for an individual, $2,000 for a corporate membership per employee. Why do I have to pay four times more? Correct. Well, that does include not only the clubhouse membership, but also the golf course membership. It's a combined membership. Okay. Sorry if I wasn't clear on that. No, that, that's fine. Um, Moni? I am a bit concerned that given our current financial status, we will not even be able to qualify to obtain uh, a $750,000 loan. Um, I'm curious if you considered any other financing options, um, partnerships, models, can you help me with that? We're very confident in obtaining the bank loan. Your golf course, with the business plan that we've constructed for your golf course to present to the banks, and with the financial data that we have stringing to it, and then in continuing years from these, we believe the bank will believe that you're a sound investment, that you're a staple in the community, and with the rising economy and corporate all around, the bank's gonna know it's a good investment in your golf course, like we know that this investment is a good investment with your golf course. Did you consider any partnerships or other models? No. Is uh, my question. I, I, I will respectfully disagree with you. We're, we're bleeding mm -hmm. uh, money right now. I do not believe, as a member of the board, that we will qualify for loans. So I'm just looking for any other options. Uh, other options would be bonds. Those are several other options. 
we are really confident in the loan. The feel that you cannot do it. The other options you could look for, you could always look for trying to sell bonds, get people, the members you have now currently invested in the golf course, the legacy people that you have, you can get them invested. They love the golf course, really building it up from within with the current members. So just to add to that, as Aaron said, we were really confident in this implementation. So we really did discuss some other financing options, but as we said, we're really confident in this, and we really saw this is the best way to go. And finally, we recognize that you have a very low amount of liabilities right now, so we saw that as an opportunity to pursue the bank loan. So I'll put my banker hat on for the moment. Um, you know, St. George's, a lot of restaurants, and to drive this loan, you're going to have to pull a bunch of people in to this restaurant. And there are two, three times as many people leaving golf as uh, in term versus increasing golf. And you're going to bet the farm, as you said, on what seems to me to be a declining, decomposing environment. Um, in a market where it snows uh, half the year. So explain to me the logic of taking a $750,000 bet on uh, cash flow indicators that are all pointing in the wrong direction. Well, one of the main parts of our proposal is that we're really trying to diversify your revenue streams. Because currently, right now, your only revenue stream that's really generating the most revenue is your golf course. And we see that as being not very well diversified. We want to look into renting these event spaces and the restaurant as adding two additional revenue streams. So, Five minutes. you understand that it's not, <coughs> marketing is not in a vacuum. It's not, you don't have a Absolutely. monopoly and there are other, many other <coughs> companies that do that, correct? Absolutely, absolutely. And what we want to look at is really looking at that, how that event space can be <clears throat> utilized by corporations as well as individuals. You've mentioned in the past that you have hosted weddings and corporate events, kind of retreats and that sort of thing. Okay, thanks. Yeah. Uh, in the uh, food and beverage department, our uh, team is uh, young and mm -hmm. inexperienced and uh, they are not uh, controlling costs uh, let alone uh, a consistent product. So I'm wondering uh, what kind of plan you came up with to get us to the you know four star dining, which uh, I'm not sold on. But you know how are we going to get our team to that point? Well, actually, impl implemented in the timeline, as you can see, they, those times that we're taking from February all the way through October and really getting that renovation up, we've outlined that we really are building on those training plans, and we really want to move Mrs. Amanda over into this management position. So during that time of regular operations, we've really outlined the time to take on some costs and really train these people and make sure that they're up to code. Okay. Um, and then as, in terms of the $750,000, how do you uh, come up with any kind of plan on how where that's going to be spent, you know, maybe we could get away with less and still make that clubhouse better? Well, first off, we wanted to really look at building it top of the line. We feel like right now, if you kind of go half-heartedly and just do some minor upgrades, you've mentioned that you've done this kind of in your lobby area, just done some minor things, and that really hasn't been making an impact. We feel like right now we have to step in with our whole self and really commit to this proposal because we're convinced that unless you really create an upscale environment, this proposal really won't function as we planned. Thank you. So my colleagues have uh, asked a number of questions about uh, the financial viability of what you're proposing. Um, I could ask some more detailed questions about that, but but won't we? Clearly, we have concerns. I, I just want to ask a general question. Why do you think we're a company? What, why do you think we have we we make profit? Why do you think we are able to uh, issue bonds? Just given what you've read, read in the case, what do you think our corporate structure really is? Can you rephrase the question? I'm sorry. I think yeah, we're all a little confused. Do, do you think we're do you think we're a for-profit company? I would say that yes, we are a for-profit company, but we're owned by our members. So we're really here to serve our members' needs. And currently, we feel like we're not serving the members' needs by having this outdated clubhouse. Right. Okay. So we are looking at maintaining profits because that's important in terms of overall sustainability. We can't serve the needs of our members without being so sustainable. So just put it this way. Do you okay. think we're, our, our aim is profit? Yes. Okay, thank you. So. I am going to drill a little bit more into the finances because I have very serious concerns about the short-term viability of this operation. 
We have $150,000 decrease in revenues year over year, and we lost money last year. And at the same time, we have an $82,000 increase in G&A costs alone. Does that trouble you? The Let's put it this way. It troubles me. Does it trouble you? <laughs> <laughs> there's always risk and there's always worries. But we're confident in this plan. We're 100% behind what we are proposing. And your plan kicks into gear a year from now. I want to know what you're going to do for me today. Today, the increase in membership fees are already helping. The, that stuff is locked in for your members. What we're doing is building long-term sustainability. Sometimes you do lose money up on the front end, but you've got to build a strong basis. Small little launches are not going to build up the company. You've got to go big or go home. There's no way to just start up little bitty things, offering little things that just won't bring in the profits. Confidence will be lost in the golf course. 45 seconds. Brian, you got anything else? I think so. Anybody got anything else? What are you putting in the clubhouse? Tell me what the clubhouse is going to look like. The clubhouse is going to have this four-star dining restaurant. We also really want to focus on building this amazing event space that's going to attract these corporate events as well as these weddings. Fitness center? We weren't really looking at that, no. We want to focus on events and really utilizing our core competency, which will be this will nice clubhouse. Will be a pool table, a casual meeting area? Well, we're looking to host events that would be need to be kind of uh, adaptable, so things that would have different chair Thank options, you. tables, that sort of thing. Uh, I don't know what time permits. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
microphone. Is this going to come through the room? We don't have to come through the room. There we go. That's a little better. So the idea here is that I give you some context for what everyone else here in the room already knows. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to outline who else we have for our participants here. We have Brock University, we have Concordia, we have the well-dressed Douglas College, we have the always fine Dublin Institute of Technology, we have the high-spirited and very comical Langara College, McMaster University, Northern Alberta Institute of Technology, I think they brought some parkas, it's the wrong province. We've got Okanagan College, always kind enough to bring us some wine, this time dessert wine. We have Royal Rose University, the host team, we have Simon Fraser University, Southern Alberta Institute of Technology, which is, which is SATE, the ultimate rival of Nate. It's kind of this, what is it? It's like a lion versus a tiger. It's this ultimate battle royale, always facing off. Southern versus North, it's like, it's like our own little, um, what do we have going on here? It's like our own little revolutionary war between State versus Nate. It's fantastic, always good competition. We have the University of Alberta, over top of everything, the University of Florida, who happen to be in March Madness right now, down to the Final Four. This is a big weekend for them. We have the University of Guelph Humber, University of Saskatchewan, my home province. They should have been wearing Rough Riders gear. Then uh, we got the University of Southern Indiana, University of Vermont, University of Winnipeg, which is really competing with the University of Alberta for being the coldest province. You don't want to live there. You want to be outside right now. It's plus 20. There are peacocks running around. That's where the fun is. No one's building snowmen here. There's not enough carrots to go around. They're still in the garden. You have to do both on? All right. Then we got uh, Western University and Wilfrid Laurier. We're all good friends. It's okay. For everyone in the room now that the mic is on, what I was doing is I'm, pro I'm here to provide, not, now it's just awkward. I feel like I was telling myself jokes privately in a mirror and everyone's looking at me. <laughs> so what we have going on is uh, this is being live streamed. And so typically what happens is that everyone in the room can conversate with each other and it's great, it's social. But the live streamers are kind of left in this lurch of staring at a beautiful curtain and a white wall, so I've stepped in here. That's exactly what it is. This is your, it's your, it's your 15 minute subway moment. Go out, make a ham and cheese, call it a day. But so I'm here now to kind of provide some banter for those looking at me. <laughs> yes, yes. They may have been hearing me before or else they were just watching some mime, doing some pantomime if the mics were not. I don't know. But in other news, I am going to be the MC for tonight, so this is kind of my warm-up lap before that goes. So maybe we'll be trying out some jokes later. Yes, I was very excited about it. So some, so, so some of the reason why I was hanging out in the rooms for over these past three days was to get some comedic relief, and it's going to be good. I'm going to save that for later. I was going to, I was going to divulge a joke, but I was like, I got to know. No, I can't pine for attention right now. So the other thing that we wanted to provide, oh, that's even worse. Now I can see myself. <laughs> what? That's a, that's a terrible idea. I'm going to tweet about myself. Somebody needs to call my parents and give me some support up there. There we go. Thanks, Lauren. Uh, so, what, so then the next thing that I would do, which is what everybody else watched, is that we wanted to go over kind of the other cases that these teams are doing for this case. Because very similar to a date, they are very similar to a marriage. This is kind of their, this is kind of the ceremony. But before this, there's a whole bunch of dates that they went on before this culminating celebration uh, before this marriage. So the first case that they did was titled Our Beer Pint, where the teams looked at Molson Coors and worked on a case that involved um, corporate responsibility and how they're going to do that. So it was a marketing and branding exercise. And the teams went through three hours of uh, deliberation before uh, deliberation and planning before they delivered their project, which was very cool. Different teams touch on different issues, partially depending on where they're from, partially dependent on their experience with beers, and partially depends on how many beers they drank the night before. That that was really the overarching theme there for for, uh, for kind of what they pitched on, which is very cool. So if you're sitting in that room and you see this come up and you know beer, 
this is kind of your quiet calling that finally, finally, all those games of beer pong have finally paid off. And I know the difference between, 50, between, a, between a buck of beer, which is terrible, Lucky Force H, which, which tastes like hairspray, and uh, a nice, fine microbrew, which is what some of the teams pitched on. The next point, I'm just providing some comedic banter. The new people coming in this room are looking at me like I'm a weirdo, but that's okay. I'm just stealing the thunder. The second case they went on uh, was a case called Beyond Epic, which was building the business beyond a single event. Um, what this one had to do with, which was cycling. So being from Victoria, I am a passive cycler. In my younger days, I used to be a BMXer. You wouldn't, you wouldn't be able to infer that by my hair, but I was a little bit of a punk. Uh, other teams, other individuals in this room engaged in what the case was about, which was actually road cycling, and figuring out how a small company uh, in South Africa would, able to be, would, would be able to expand their business beyond South Africa and how they would do that, what, what the steps they would go through. And the teams pitched on a variety of topics from uh, expanding the, the, um, the competition in South Africa, some took it to North America, and they, did, and they did that in a variety of ways. It was very, very cool. My time, however, is up. So for me and you, it's going to be another 15 minutes. We'll be on another speed date, and we'll continue this great conversation. Ta-ta for now. Turn these seconds off. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Make a great warm-up act. Or I'm sorry, you're far. I'm thinking the next time I try to score world record or something. Longest time. I know. Longest time I held my breath. Skinniest guy on stage.
All right, we're back. Welcome. Uh, we have our second team coming up. It's team number 11. Uh, I'll introduce them as team number 11. They can come in. Thanks very much. Golf and Country Club. We're here from RTT Consulting and we're passionate about introducing our new strategy for you. So I want to take you into a situation. You're sitting at the 17th hole and you just can't get out of the sand pit. You've done everything, you've used every single iron and you just cannot get out. What do you do? You have to refocus, you have to restructure and you have to alter the way you're thinking about things and the situation. So with that I'm going to pass it over. So, we've analyzed some of your problems. Your company is doing some really great things, but it has a lot of issues that we had to that focus into certain areas. So to begin with, we've started by um, differentiating them between procedures, customer service, and HR issues. Specifically, you have a huge lack of cash. You have none of it left, which is a major problem in terms of business. There's also no cost structure for food. There's a lack of performance reviews for employees. In terms of customer service though, this is where we see this being a big problem. Your customer service is failing. And there's poor service for the members, for the clients coming in, then there's poor member treatment specifically who, to the people, the clients that are giving you the most money. And that's a big problem for a business that provides customer service. And lastly with HR, there's low employee morale within it, which is something that you do want to fix. And there's a lack of job descriptions, which we believe leads to low employee morale because they don't really know, a lot of them, what they're doing. And so when we go and really break this out, what we believe that this really looks towards is a lack of focus, as Sega mentioned. So the procedures and the customer services, there's just no focus. You don't, we don't see where you want to go. And we want to change this and get you out of that 17th hole. And so as a result, we've de decided that the problem really at hand is how does St. Thomas refocus their company and how do you really refocus yourselves to provide for future success? So when we, looked, when we did a situational analysis of your organization, we looked at the strengths, the weaknesses, some opportunities and threats to the industry. Now, in terms of strengths, you are the 50th best golf course in Canada, ranked in the, out of the top 100, um, which is a very big strength but it's something we'll talk a little bit more about later as to whether or not we should be focusing on that. Um, we also have course certifications and the cooperative sanctuary. So being the eighth um, golf course in Ontario to achieve this is a very big strength of your organization. When we look at weaknesses, your clubhouse right now, you've identified it as being a weakness of the, of the golf course as a whole. 
that people aren't wanting to bring their guests in to look at it, to go down to the locker rooms. That's something we want to address. There's also employ low employee morale, like Christina had mentioned, and the <coughs> members are unhappy with that service level. Now, in terms of some opportunities, there is a large market um, within Canada for, the gol for golfing. So that's a really big opportunity that we can take advantage of. And there's many surrounding cities within your area. So it's not just St. Thomas that you're situated in. There, London is only eight kilometers away, and there's several other towns and cities around the area that you can draw from, which is a large opportunity. In terms of threats, um, people aren't playing golf as much anymore. So the people who are playing, 38% of people said that they're playing less every year than they did the year before. So that's a threat to the entire golf industry. There is the economic downturn that's playing a, um, some havoc on the golf industry as well, as people have less um, available cash to actually go and play, and companies are having less uh, corporate memberships. And then the weather. So you've identified this as a big issue, the weather in Canada. When you have such a limited season, if there's any sort of um, additional weather concerns, that's a threat to the golf industry as a whole. We also looked at some stakeholders. What stakeholders are, are um, a part of your organization and you have to take into consideration? So we looked at the members, both current and prospective members. We also looked at employees. This is a big <laughs> part of your organization that we also have to take a look at and make sure that the employees are taken care of. There's also the community, so the St. Thomas um, town that you're uh, near, it's a big um, stakeholder, as well as casual players who either come with members or come to the tournaments that you host. Now when we looked at these, we identified primary and secondary stakeholders, the primary being the members, both current and prospective, <laughs> as well as the employees, and secondary um, stakeholders being the community and the casual players. So we really want to focus on those primary stakeholders with our, when we looked at our alternatives and how we evaluated those alternatives moving forward. So as you can see, we outlined how the trending of the members are going. From, from 2005, you had a quite, a, quite a healthy, compared to your competitors, of the um, member, um, number of members in the social, so those who aren't playing but are coming for the food. They're coming for the experience and they're coming for dining. Um, junior players, so under the age of 18, who are playing on your golf courses, and adult players. So we can see that there is a trend of it decreasing. We have to ask ourselves, why is this happening? Why are they being turned off? Why are they going to your competitors? And why aren't they staying and spending their money? And furthermore, the total principal members that you have, it's decreasing. This needs to be addressed, and that's the, that's the viewpoint that we took when we looked at this problem. So looking at our profitability framework, there's really two ways to generate profit. Either you increase your revenue or you decrease your costs. Currently, we have focused on decreasing your costs. Um, it has helped increase your profits a little, but the biggest issue is that members are being unhappy. And, and what's happened from there is that less people are joining your club and less people are gonna wanna come in. So we believe that you should focus more on your revenue, on increasing your revenue stream. And the way to do that is to increase the amount of members and the amount of people playing at your club. And so now we're going to be look, we, we chose three alternatives that we believe uh, were very plausible alternatives uh, for you to consider. The first was to shift focus. So shifting focus from decreasing costs to now increasing members. So focusing on decreasing costs and really making sure, and the big focus is making sure that the members are happy, the employees are happy, which hasn't been happening uh, in the past. The second has been selling business units. So taking your restaurant and taking your club, and instead of having it owned by the golf, by the golf course, now having it privately owned and focusing it that way. So that was selling the business units. And the third was just creating a new marketing plan. Not focusing as much on the employees and the members, but trying to create a marketing plan that makes St. Thomas look look very good to the public, and, it's, and hoping that people will come that way. So from there, we are now focused, we now, we now discuss three criteria that we believe that you should consider, and there are values that you, that you believe in. And the first is, the, is benefiting the current members. So that's our first criteria, is making sure that the current members are happy. The second is increasing revenue, of course. Profits are very important. And increasing revenue, as we talked about a few slides ago, is, should be the main focus. And the third is benefiting your employees. Currently, some of them are not very happy. The members don't believe the employees uh, are doing a great job. So the focus is how can we benefit the employees to make a better, a better experience for the members. 
So when we looked at an evaluation, we evaluated all the different alternatives based on those criteria. Uh, we looked at each criteria as being equally weighted, just to keep that in mind. Um, but when we looked at the marketing plan, we really felt that the marketing plan doesn't benefit the current members, as it'd be looking at bringing in new members, but those current members will still have the same issues. And we also saw that it doesn't really benefit employees because you're not addressing any of those employee issues. When we looked at selling off the business units, that really doesn't impact, or has a negative impact on the employees as they would no longer be employees of your organization. And there's no guarantee that the new owner of those business units would uh, maintain those employees. And there's a likelihood that they might get laid off and be out of a job. So when we looked at, at this, shifting the focus is really where we want to look and we believe is the best alternative for your organization moving forward. So within shifting focus, we really want to go from, right now you have a large focus on the course. You put a lot of money and a lot of effort into actually making the course really good and making getting those accreditations to say, yes, it is proven that our course is good. Now, while we do believe that the course is a large part of a golf course, the actual physical course, when you go golfing, it's not all about how good the physical course is. When you go golfing, it's about that community, going and playing golf with your friends, and going back to the clubhouse and having that time after the round. That 19th hole is what we really want to focus on, and that's why we want to shift the focus from the actual course to the experience that the members have when they're at your golf course. So in terms of the, sh we broke our implementation down into short term, medium term, and long term, and we'll take you through each of those. So in terms of the short term, we really want to focus on, in terms of procedures, reduce spending on the accreditation. So that's taking that focus off of the course a little bit. We realize that there is some money that is going to have to be spent every year on the accreditation process, but really reducing that. Last year you spent over $300,000 on this, and that's a huge cost to your organization that we really feel can be scaled back in order to focus that money somewhere else in your company. And then in terms of customer service, right now your, um, your members are complaining about the lack of quality in the kitchen. The menu isn't up to par. We really recommend going out and getting a chef-inspired menu. Um, this would be a, a chef that we had looked at was Chef Bobby Flay. Going and getting him, he's a professional chef, he's a celebrity chef. If he's able to create a menu for your clubhouse and he's able to then, you're able to then implement that in your clubhouse, that's going to draw in people. It's going to keep those members coming back. So instead of leaving after a year or two, those members are going to be more likely to stay because that food quality is there. And that's really important. And then in terms of the human resources, uh, as Christiana mentioned, the employees don't really know what to do. They don't have job descriptions, and that's causing them low employee morale. If you don't know what your role is within the organization, you don't know how to be better, you don't know where to improve, you don't know what you're doing wrong. And getting those job descriptions is going to be very crucial in increasing that employee morale, as well as moving forward when we're looking at performance evaluations. So if uh, there's no um, job description for an employee, you can't performance manage them, you can't do performance evaluations because there's nothing to judge them off of. You don't know what their job actually is. So those two things are very important to increase the customer service within your organization and make the employees uh, increase their morale. And then lastly, customer service training. So this is, the, your members have been complaining that the customer service they're receiving isn't at the, par, isn't at the level that they're expect, they would expect at a private golf course. Now, in terms of what we would want to have for that, it would be perfect. Um, it would be looking at making sure that the members are known. So when a member comes in off the 18th hole, the employees know their name, they know what they want to drink, and they know what they want to eat. That's very important in a private member or a private member golf club. Is that feeling that I'm important when I walk into the clubhouse? We really want to focus on that moving forward. So moving forward into the medium term, um, we really believe that the, that, so that the short term is really, you have two months before your season starts, what are you going to do then? The medium term is more things that can happen throughout the next season. And so when we look at this, we've suggested things to really enhance the member experience while they're there. So things that we thought of were things such as golf workshops that are free for members that happen on a monthly or bi-weekly basis depending on your availability and their interest, but it's specific things that really add to their experience of why they are a member and it's a really w great way to give back and say thank you for being a member with us. And it's thing, you have the resources there, so both Andrew and Wade um, are certified and they're instructors and they have the experience to provide this to the members and it's technical things, so not just this is how you play golf, your members know how to do that, but smaller things like this is how to, like working on sand pit traps and working on 
you know, driving and that kind of stuff and what clubs to use when and those extra things to really give back to your members and make their experience memorable for your club. Another thing is member only dinners and holiday brunches we think would be wonderful and it would really create that community aspect, give back to the um, to the members again. They all would be paying for these, but it's a way, it's their only invite, is, so they're, they're, they're the only ones that are invited to these and it's a really great way to say thank you again, this is only for you, this is exclusive and really treat them like VIPs again and really add on to that experience. Um, in the medium term as well, we hope to that you would expand the employee packages and so to really increase their experience um, as employees um, by giving them memberships to the golf course, by providing them with the training that they are interested in if they do want to pursue career um, things like that and by giving back and increasing their package availability so that they want to stay with your company and that they feel like they're a part of the community as well. In terms of the long term though, um, within procedures we believe that the initiation structure, this was a big thing for us that we really felt turned off a lot of employees, however we do understand that the membership fees have already been set for the year, but in terms of long term as next season, we believe that you should actually change the initiation structure. The point of it was to really keep people invested as members in the long term. We get that, but we think that by making them pay so much and promise $7,000 over the next seven years is too much for the people who don't even know if they have jobs for the next little bit. And so we suggest changing this um, from a promissory note to just an inc regressive membership fee. And so a bit higher membership at, in the first year, but as they go through the next couple of years, it does lower. And so you're still getting that investment. They still see the benefit of being members long term, but you're changing that initial hesitation to really sign up because they're scared that they are going to have to be stuck in it for seven years. And so you're getting a lot of those members in that you wouldn't have got in before. Um, in terms of membership levels, we also suggest providing three different membership levels. So um, silver, gold, and platinum and working that into your structure, giving them things like reserved tea times um, if they do pay more for membership, to again provide that membership value, provide them a lot more value and encourage them to be paying more and be invested more in your community. In terms of the customer service, we do believe you should go ahead with renovating the clubhouse. We understand that in 2008 it was a little difficult and there was a huge downturn, but we believe by doing some of these things in the short and medium term, you'll be able to work forward and renovate that clubhouse to make it a lot better member experience. As both Adam and Marco mentioned, the members are really unhappy about the clubhouse. They are scared to bring their friends in. They're embarrassed of bringing them down to the change room. And this is not good membership treatment. And so you really want to change that clubhouse to make it a place where people feel proud to come. They, you want to make it a place that pe members will come in and spend more money at your company um, and stay in the clubhouse. And so we do suggest you renovate it, and we do have um, some other ideas of how to add on to that that we can discuss further in the question and answer period. But also, we believe that another added benefit to customer service would be partnering with golf courses um, around Eastern Canada. And so really creating sister companies and going out and seeking those partnerships so that members also see another benefit to being a member with your company that when they do travel or if they do go on holidays, they can also get a discounted rate at other golf courses, which is um, a best practice done by other golf courses throughout the world and we believe it's something that you could really pick up on on the long term. And then in terms of HR, continual training, continual professional development for member or for employees while they're there for the length of their um, employment, really encouraging them to stay with your company. You have people who've been there for a long time, which is great. We want to encourage this and show them that there is value to stay as an employee. And again, just increasing performance, performance management and those performance evaluations and how employees are managed. So there's no cash on your balance sheet right now. Is that the end of the world? The answer is no. There's many other options other than just looking at the cash. So looking at the current ratio, we calculated that your current assets over liabilities is actually 2.7. The average that you would like is two. So the current ratio you're looking at because you have a lot of inventory. But the more important ratio for you is your quick ratio. That's taking your monetary assets over liabilities. And we took away the inventory and focused on what kind of cash do you have at hand? Maybe cash not on the balance sheet, but you have short-term and unrestricted short-term investments that you could go look into. And that makes your quick ratio over that one, which is the goal. So it's at 1.8. So there is hope. You have two options. Your first is to look at your current, oper your available operating line of credit. You have $450,000 available, but you usually don't want to go uh, on your operating line of credit 
because now you're having to deal with the bank more, and that's not what you would really like if you have a different option. And so we looked at the unrestricted short-term investments. So in there, you have $252,000 to put towards costs. So it's easily accessible, so maybe it's not cash on hand, but it's easily accessible to go into. The opportunity cost is 1.2% of taking those, of taking it out, but we believe that going through your unrestricted short-term investments is the way to go. So the cost for this, for uh, the implementation that we're, that we're presenting to you, is uh, the short-term, so look at the chef-inspired menu, $25,000, job evaluations, 5,000 employee training, 5,000, looking towards the medium-term member workshops, and employee memberships. So a total cost will be $50,600. So that's easily accessible taking from your short-term, unrestricted short-term investments. And the return. So just looking at the year one return, we're expecting, we expect that you will have 50 new members because of this new service that you're providing, um, and less members are gonna be leaving. So we expect from the 20 that left before, we now expect that only that 10, 10 extra members will stay, and so, looking at our, the return, the return will be $266,000 there. So we have a brief timeline that we can discuss more in the future of exactly what to do and who to do it and when to do it, but moving on really quickly um, through some of the obstacles, but we really just want to take the time to summarize. We'd love to discuss that in question and answer period, but due to some time restraints, um, what was your lack of, your lack of focus was the main issue. We suggest taking that, issue, that focus from the course and moving it to the experience. And with the procedures and the customer service and the HR and improving those three, we believe that we can get you a return of more members and more satisfied members, which for your, in, for your company is the best ideal situation. And so we'd like to take the time to thank you for having RTT Consulting here and open up the floor to any questions that you do have. <laughs> Directing our attention from the uh, uh, from uh, towards the experience. However, I want to direct your attention back towards the cash. As you so cleverly pointed out, uh, there is money in the uh, short-term investment fund. However, um, we burned through half of that last year, and at our current loss pr projection, we're going to burn through the other half of it this year, absent any significant changes. And on. So I, I want to make sure that we, we address the issue of the operating losses. We've got $300,000 worth of operating losses over the last two years, normalized. And, um, um, and your G&A costs have increased during that time of almost $82,000. Uh, this trend is not sustainable. And what are you going to do tomorrow to start turning this situation around? Sure. Um, so I think the biggest thing that we have to look at is when we shift that focus and take some money off of those um, the accreditation, that's $300,000 we spent last year. If we're able to reduce that, that's a lot less money going out. So that's one thing that we want to look at. Can you also, one of you, spin up where that accreditation cost shows up on the um, income statement? And then carry on with your question. Yeah. For sure. Um, so there's that cost that we would look sure. at reducing. Also, uh, when we're looking at that... Um, that's savings, unrestricted savings. That's something that we look at in the short term um, that you could use. But we also feel that that $450,000 of operating line of credit is something that we would also use in a worst case scenario. So we really want to focus on using that unrestricted um, investments first and then moving on to the um, that operating line of credit if necessary. But we do feel that by bringing on new members, we're gonna be able to increase the revenues. And we had projected $266,000 of increased revenues for the upcoming year. And memberships being uh, purchased at the start of the year would have that near the start of your season. And then also reducing those costs, especially in the accreditation phase. Ryan, do you have any questions? Yes, please. Um, you talked about the 19th whole experience, and that's wonderful. But tell me how you're improving the 19th whole experience. Yes. Yeah. Definitely by first starting with the focus on employees. When employees are invigorated, when they are passionate about what they do, and they have the backbone of their employers telling us, what is my job? How do I improve? And how do I create an experience that not only great for me, but Perfect. more experience for? Tell me about the regressive. I have a pro I have, I have, I'm having a struggle understanding the regressive mm -hmm. fee structure. Is this what you put yeah. up? Yeah, so right here. So, so this means in year one, I pay $5,000. Yeah. Exactly. In year two, I pay 4500 mm -hmm. 
So I currently, is, my members have paid $1,000 effectively and stayed for five years or seven years. I'm now, what's the total of this? What am I paying over this five years? <laughs> Sorry. So you're on twenty thousand dollars. Yeah. So you made my membership fee structure effectively twenty times what it is today. All right. So I'm just just for a clarification. I'm just trying to clarify. Yeah, no, no, yeah. for sure. Um, so that five thousand dollars. So currently, when a new member signs up, they pay thirty six hundred dollars for that first year, and then an additional thousand dollars for an initiation cost, and then a thousand dollars every year. This is taking out that initiation cost and building it into the entire cost of the membership. So instead of paying thirty six plus one, they'd just be paying that five thousand dollars. Okay, so this is including the yearly yes. Yes. The yes. yearly yes. fees. Yes. Yeah. Sorry, that Sorry was for the miscommunication. <laughs> okay. Morning. Um, do you know, I'm really interested particularly in long-term strategies and mm -hmm. partnerships. I, I liked one of the options you discounted. Um, <laughs> the, um, so I'm interested in expanding a little bit on your partnerships with other golf courses and what that looks like for us in the long term. Like, how does, how does how does that add value and how do you see that increasing our membership and, and increasing our bottom line? I think one of the biggest problems is you have members leaving and why are they leaving? They're not getting added value and that added value comes through having extra, if I go to the Maritimes, if I go to Quebec, if I go to Alberta, if I go to BC, I have a preferred price that I will pay at these mm -hmm. golf courses and most members who are actively golfing, they don't go to a vacation and not golf. So having that added value, and we don't want to make sister companies, we want to make sister relationships. So, so, so having benefits on not only the other company, but, our com but your firm, but your um, golf course also. So bringing in not only traveling golf, um, golfers, but allowing our golfer, go golfers to know that when you travel, we still have you in mind. We still have your needs in mind. We still have your interests in mind. And then allowing them to not cut off this membership just so that they can buy a couple here and a couple there. So that's what our thought was for that. Five minutes. We have a huge uh, asset that lies fallow for half the year. Mm -hmm. uh, I didn't see anything in your presentation about how to use this asset for the winter uh, through the winter. Uh, do you have any thoughts on how to generate revenue in the off season, other than, other than the restaurant, mm -hmm. which is not a great attraction at Yeah. To be honest. Um, we haven't thought about that. We'd love to sit down and work more throughout that. Um, but our focus was really on the member experience. And we do believe by increasing the dining experience and by bringing your members back throughout the year um, for those dinners that we did suggest, that you can begin to utilize the restaurant a lot more throughout the year. Um, but yeah, we're not going to lie to you and say that we make something up. But we would love to come back and have another meeting and um, yeah. work on what to focus on. That's during fine. The yeah, thank you. Yeah, okay. yeah thanks. Uh, you mentioned having uh, tiered memberships, yeah. and uh, I'm, I'd like to hear more about what you kind of, Second. the concept behind that. Perfect. <laughs> yeah, um, so we thought, the reason why we brought this up was to really just show you what kind of um, things we see with that. So the main thing is that um, by renovating the clubhouse, you'd be able to add in a plus and a regular um, change room. So that's one thing that we'd love to discuss uh, or to add into the tier. So different tiers would have access to different change rooms, which potentially have saunas and um, a different kind of experience, similar to YMCA and those um, extra right. clubs. Um, we also see preferred tea times being um, within the structure, as well as reserved seating within the clubhouse or also on um, special menus if they have different things um, and working with them and allowing them to utilize more of the facility. Right, because yeah. uh, one of the things you talked a lot about is creating community within yeah. the, uh, the golf club, but this uh, creates uh, cliques almost in like... We thought of that, but however, it comes back to the whole community aspect. This way you can have all the community that can afford to come to this club. Mm -hmm. So it can only be transform into a click if the community makes it. And by us reevaluating St. Thomas, we don't see that happening. <coughs> it's a union-based city. It is a city that's based on blue-collar industry and based on community and relationships. So that is why we thought that if we can create a tiered system that allows every single individual the opportunity to join this community, to be a, a member, to be, to enjoy the experience and really be a part of their entire St. Thomas community. Thanks. So, um, Quick clarification, when you said sell off business units, what were you speaking specifically of? 
Um, so the focus, just, just quick answer. Yeah. So when you said sell off, it was more taking the restaurant, taking okay. restaurant. That's fine. Okay. okay. So going from there, because that's what I'm thinking. <laughs> yeah. So um, in between keeping food and beverage operations and selling off food and beverage operations, do you see there is any middle ground? Well, we believe that um, the way we evaluated it was more the fact that if you want the employees to all be working for the same. They feel they're working under the same leadership. Working. Were those your, your only two options, like in between keeping it and selling it off? When we looked at it, that's how we looked at it. What, I'm, what, I'm, what I'm going to, so if we just explore this outside of its general impact on the whole viability of the, of the enterprise, can you just on, uh, on the spot sort of brainstorm, what, what would a concession model look like for this? What well, would gain sharing look like for well, 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 the could, concession model? Uh, one, one thing you could do is have the, uh, have the golf course own it during the, during the months that the golf course is available. And then the off months, that's when it's, when it's snowy out, that's when you could rent it out and have somebody else take ownership over those, those four, five months um, as well. So you could do that to create revenue throughout the year. And how would you, how would you structure that? One minute. So definitely doing a gain sharing. So like Marco said, selling it off to, not necessarily but renting it off. So yes, they have, they have the responsibility to operate, to um, concede to your standards, your, your mission, your values to the, to, the, um, to the end users, to those consumers and the people there who are consuming their product. And its so financial impacts? The financials would be 80-20. Like so they, if they take on all the risks, we're taking off 20% of net sales, not of net profits. Okay. Appreciate your answer. Yeah. So any organization must work with what you have and what you have is a course, a clubhouse, and a membership. Mm -hmm. Beyond the revenue from the members, have you considered how you can leverage the members to the advantage of your club? Um, so that's definitely something to look at moving forward. That's something you have with having um, members bring in additional guests to the, um, to the club to golf with them. So that's one revenue stream. And then when you're able to bring in additional people to your club with a member, that's when they're going to be able to see the course, have that trial phase, and then really that's a way that they can become new members. So that's one of the ways we're looking at additional revenue outside of just that membership, bringing on new members. That's time. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I feel like there's my, my support network over here. <laughs> All right.
Uh, so can we turn this? Can we turn this down? I don't really want to yell into it. Do I need to? I feel like they can hear me pretty good. Can I turn down? Do I turn down down here? Do I turn down over there? Turn down a little bit. It's always weird when you hear your own voice. I feel it's a little bit more Michael Jackson-y than I need to. Rest in peace. Fantastic. Thanks, Mom. Thank you. All right, so we're going to uh, catch up where we left off here, covering the last two cases that, that uh, these teams participated in. First one, hey, Michelle. First one's a local case, and I actually wrote this local case. So what that was about is about the uh, township of Esquimalt or Esquimalt or Esquimimalt or Eskimopai, however you want to pronounce it, because that became a big difficulty for the teams. But what that was about is about a township that's in the Victoria area that really has, that is really confused about how they move forward. They had a branding issue. Uh, everyone thinks this town is associated with bongs, payday loans, poop. That's for another, that's one other topic altogether. And then there was the, then it was all these issues compounded and it's really what the town became known for. So the case is about how does the town shake that image and attract young families to encourage growth and to accelerate their growth moving into 2014 and beyond. Because a lot of other municipalities and regions in the area are growing quite rapidly, but this township isn't experiencing the same amount of growth. So what can the teams do to provide alternatives for this town council uh, to aid the town in growing? This became very difficult because while the question was so open, because it's a township, you have to get buy-in from the community, you have to get buy-in from people like you, and that's and that really became one component, but then there was another component that had to do with property tax and bureaucracy and business development and, and how you massaged all that through. So a lot of the teams went a variety of different ways and what their solutions were. The case right now is obviously about a golf club, and if you haven't been watching, you wouldn't know that, or if you have been watching and you didn't know that, that might be an issue, but that's okay. That's all we have me here to clarify everything else. But I did get a request. Loves the sound of his own chat. I do. I do. Um, so the next step here is we want everybody on this live chat to also be using the RRU hashtag. Uh, on Twitter, you can also use it on Facebook. Facebook's incorporating hashtags now. But what I'm going to do is we're actually going to use one of the hashtags. I'm going to tweet something out here. I'm going to show you how to use it. So what we're going to do, open up Twitter on my phone. We have a peacock here. So the whole point of the peacock is that Royal Roads is very well known for peacocks. It's in a Katy Perry, it's in a Katy Perry music video. This is the real thing. And it's mating season here. Uh, and the peacocks make just obscure, obscure mating noises. It's kind of like a bar with a big bodybuilder sitting there, making all sorts of squawks and calls or whatever, just trying to get some attention, really primp himself up. It's fantastic. Gets a little bit awkward, but it's always interesting. And then the babies come out, and babies are always adorable, even peacock babies. Um, it's a big thing. But so what we're going to do here is we're going to take a selfie. That's going to be our first step in, uh, in starting this tweet. So what we're going to do, I'm going to take a picture quickly with me, this peacock, There we go. That's what I want. Come on, Peacock. This isn't a formal. And we're going to send out this tweet using the R-U-I-U-C-C -C hashtag, which is hashtag R-U-I-U-C-C. -C. So we're going to put that in with me here. I got my girlfriend calling me. She doesn't know I'm on this line. It's going to be weird. Maybe we'll FaceTime with her. Let's see if we can do that. Hey there, Stephanie. How are you? Hi. Hey, Stephanie. Hi. Hey, I'm just doing a live podcast, right? Or I'm just doing a live video cast right now, which you have now been incorporated into. So, if there's anything you'd like to say, now's the time to say it. <laughs> okay, Stephanie. We'll talk to you later. Have a good afternoon. She's getting her nails and hair done in Toronto. It's freezing there. Basically, an ice age. Not the movie, though. Back 2,000 years. Okay, back to the tweet. So what we're doing is we're going to use hashtag R-U-I-U-C-C. -C. 
and we're gonna make a little peacock joke here. Peacock, more like Oscock. There we go, so we're gonna send that out, and what we wanna do is that we wanna encourage everybody online viewing the live stream to kind of tweet your feedback as well, start to encourage this conversation with everyone else who's uh, either here in the audience, who, who's watching it, who doesn't have the benefit of commenting on the live stream, just kind of start to create this dialogue. Because there's a lot of great conversation happening in the live stream. Some about me, it's only a fake tan anyways, it is not fake, it is not. That is a lie. I'm outside, on my deck, got, got, got that nice west facing sun. It's beautiful. It's all natural. Come on team. This is the real thing. You can't pay for this. This isn't $10,000. There's no tanning bed. If I was in a tanning bed, I'd have wrinkles. Do you see wrinkles? I don't think so, Tim. Not today. This isn't home improvement. Thanks, Dan. Dan, if you're gonna be in the audience here, what you should be doing is using the RUICC hashtag to start, in, to start talk because this will allow you to speak to everyone we have on live stream if they are using the hashtag as well. It's going to provide some very informative, very interesting conversation. You want to get up here? Here you go. Paul, I'm going to give it over to you. We have these, we have a group of live streamers who are watching us right now and, and we're just providing some interesting banter. I'm going to turn over to you and the peacock. Well, 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 I will call my girlfriend back. You're not interested in this? No, well, I'm that's not. not very interesting. You can't sit up here with me. I'm not your airbag. I'm not a seatbelt. I'm, I'm not your life raft. Might be a lifesaver, though. <laughs> I love lifesavers, Paul. That's a good one. It's very good. Thank you. All right. That's it for me. We'll see you at the next break. You want me to stay up here? Something you want me to say? R-R-U-I-U-C-C. What was I saying? R-R-U-C-C. No, I definitely had R R U I U C. No, I definitely threw in the extra U. So just to confirm, this is the hashtag. I've apparently been saying it wrong. I feel like I feel like a grandpa who's been who's been on about some old story. Didn't make sense the whole time. That's what we're looking for. In case you can't see it, I'm gonna read it. It's R R U I U C C. My Katy Perry joke that I sent on Twitter. No one's getting that one unless you're following Katy Perry. Maybe I'll get a retweet there. Hold this thing up again. That's what we're looking for. I'll be on there. We can talk. Throw my phone number on the back. It's a 250 area code. It might be long distance for you. That's okay. There's no roaming here. Are you, oh, I did send it wrong. Okay, David is right. Guilty as charged. All right, well, I'm out of here. I'm going back downstairs. Have a good time, everyone. Let's keep it positive. Let's keep it fun. There we go. Thanks for the woos. I'm excited for tonight. I'll see you there. Maybe I'll take my shirt off. That's inappropriate. That's inappropriate. Not for a stage, just because you're on the stage.
them back again. That was just a commercial break. Oh, we're back here for round two. All right. So now what we're looking for. Do not want to repeat a Facebook game. So can... Phil, there is a bus going to the ball. There we go. All right, so what we're going to do here is we're going to use another R-U-I-U-C-C. R-U-I-U-C-C. Where's my sheet? I'm just going to quickly put this up here. That's what we're looking for. We're going to tweet some else out one more time. Make sure that it works. All right, live stream. Give me something. another tweet here. It's going to say, they can't read that? But sometimes they can because it focuses on my face. Shout out to the live stream. Hashtag are you? There we go. We're back. I'm providing banter in the midterms between when everyone leaves and everyone comes back in. You want to run out of things to say in five minutes? Step up here. Okay. Thank you. Uh, but I'm actually done. I'll fill you in on the next one. We'll, we'll bring you up here. Katy Perry music video up here.
All right, welcome back, everyone. Two more competing teams. Our next team I'd like to call upon is team number five. Welcome. Okay, so just before we start, I need Michelle, the, uh, the timekeeper for today. Um, I'll hold up a blue card, five minute warning. If you wouldn't mind just nodding to let me know if you see it. And the red card will be a, a one minute warning. So I've got 20 minutes on the clock, and your time starts now. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to today's presentation. On behalf of myself and my team, I'd just like to say how excited we are to be here to present to the Board of Directors of the St. Thomas Golf and Country Club, in particular General Manager Rob Mason. Now, I myself do not possess the skill and expertise needed to execute a good game of golf. I'm more of a hole-in-eight girl as opposed to a hole-in-one. But hopefully through our recommendations today, we can ensure that the St. Thomas Golf Country Golf Club does score a hole-in-one. I'm Amy. I'm Norkin. I'm Paul. And I'm Fiona. And we are, we are here today to bring St. Thomas Golf and Country Club into its next generation. So our mandate here today is to ensure that St. Thomas retains a high quality services and amenities for its current members and the new members we plan on bringing on board at affordable prices that drives forward the goal of breaking into the top 25 <coughs> uh, golf courses within Canada. Our deliverables here today are a 30% increase in membership a membership revenue uh, gain of $597,600 and a return on investment of over 65% over the next 18 months. So our key recommendations here today to achieve these deliverables are to create a sustainable business model for St. Thomas and to bring you above par with our initiatives. So in regards to our situational analysis, the analysis will consist of the financial performance of your organisation to date, key performance indicators within the company, uh, demographics and SWOT analysis. And these criteria were essential in reg regards to providing the options which we believe are available to your company and what have led to the key recommendations which Amy so kindly uh, discussed. So in regards to the financial performance, as you can see from 2010 to 2011, you had steady um, revenue growth, but however there are losses which are concerning and we, need, we feel that we need to address this on a short, short term to long term basis. So in relation to the key performance indicators within your financial position, as you can see you currently have a debt of around $24,000 and a line of credit option which is up to $450,000 with a prime rate of 2% and 1% with collateral of $300,000 against that. We also see that you have an unrestricted short term investment of around $228,000 which is very interesting in regards to helping you grow in the next few years. Likewise, there's a membership fee um, that you currently hold of 3,600 euro, an initiation fee of 7,000, with the promissory note 1,000 each year for the longer they stay within the, within the club. So in regards to demographics, there are 21.2 million Canadians um, capable of playing golf, with 5.7 million uh, currently held as golfers. But we find it interesting in regards to the, the separation with people who do it on a recreational basis and we feel that we could certainly hit this and um, this market. Also there's 850 golf courses in the province of Ontario and the annual golf sales estimated at 13.6 million which we feel that we certainly be able to uh, take advantage of. So the SWOT analysis, this is the strengths, the weaknesses, the opportunities and the threats both in the internal and external market. So in regards to the strengths, they're ranked top uh, 50 within Canada and this is certainly something very um, very favorable. Likewise, your environmental excellence, student scholarship, but the key strength we feel is your asset and your infrastructure, we, which we certainly feel is a strong foundation to build up. Likewise, there's the weaknesses. As you can see, we've noted a few. L uh, low staff morale, unsatisfied members, uh, seasonal sport, but the essential one is the poor financial model, and we feel we certainly be able to address this today. In regards to the opportunities, we're very excited about these opportunities. And um, the off season, we feel we'd be able to address, expand dining experience, or restructuring your budget and renovation of the clubhouse are, are the answers we feel we have to give you today. And finally, the threats. These are the threats which we feel could affect your business model, and this is the weather, unemployment, and the economic downturn. But we certainly want to curtail our model to um, pass pass away from these. 
So following on from our analysis, that allowed us to identify a number of key issues that we feel need to be addressed. One of the first issues that jumped to most prominent into our minds, starting from the top, was employee morale. As well as that, we also have to be aware of declining memberships and as well as that, the lack of participation from corporate businesses. We also have to factor in the fact that a lot of our members are currently unsatisfied, particularly with our two-for-one coupon, and that our clubhouse um, is not currently up to standard. We do also have to be currently aware that from 2008 we are in an economic recession, and that's something that was constantly in our mind throughout our recommendations. And as Lorcan mentioned, the weather will always be a factor, and tying it all together is an overall poor business model that we feel we can improve on. So to further distinguish between um, subsidiary issues and primary issues, we place all of our issues into prioritization matrix. How this particular matrix works is it categorizes and organizes issues based on the importance of the issue and also the urgency of that issue. So based on this, we had four main issues that jumped into our mind. First, the declining membership and the lack of corporate business uptake. As well as that, the poor overall business model that we feel we can address. Next, employee morale. That's something that we really have to get back on side if our organization is going to be successful in the future and finally our unsatisfied members. So in order to deal with these issues, we've come up with a number of options that we feel are available to you in relation to a sustainable business model that we'd like to develop. We do feel that we could um, offer the incentive of developing a training student school to facilitate for the future. We could upgrade our clubhouse, as well as that we're currently leasing our cards. We feel that we could, there is always the option to purchase these on a depreciation rate basis. And finally, the introduction of a KPI costing system to offer further <coughs> management of our finances. So we used three criteria to establish which we feel was the most suitable for your organization. Each criteria is scored on a zero to five basis. Zero being a score of very, very poor, and five being a score of excellent. So we wanted to make sure that all of our recommendations uses our assets. We have to use what's at our disposal within your organization. Finally, will it provide a platform for the future? This is something that we see in the long term satisfying our members. And in relation to satisfied members, a very wise man once said that a satisfied customer is the most sustainable business plan of all. So as you can see, we have two clear winners here, which is the upgrade of our clubhouse and the introduction of a KPI costing system. And mainly this is based on we feel it will satisfy our members and it utilizes our assets to the best of their ability. Next, in, re in relation to attraction and morale. Once again, we've come up with a series of options. We feel that there is an, always a base within professional sport to attract large tournaments. As well as that, we do feel we could expand your scholarship option past Ontario and out into the wider community. And finally, the driving range and the incorporation of events that we feel could promote your company. So we've used the same criteria as before, same scoring system, zero to five, five being a score of excellent. So with all of our recommendations, we have to make sure that it was sustainable in the long term. As well as that, we want to make sure that it would attract new members to order to generate revenue and stop our decline and annual losses that we're currently seeing. And finally, we do feel that there is a six month gap within the year that is currently not being exploited. So as you can see here, once again, we have a clear winning with the implementation of our driving range and our events. And the main reason that we feel this was an excellent suggestion is because of its long-term sustainability and the fact that it utilizes the full 12 months of the year. So first recommendation is bringing you up over par. Now a CEO, a former CEO of General Electric, uh, Jack Welch, once said, Execu er, execution is, our ex Never mind, the strategy is about execution and not about planning. <laughs> there we go. So we want to develop a sustainable model and how are we going to do this? What, ex what executions are we going to use? We're going to refurbish the dining room interior. We're going to re uh, rejuvenate the clubhouse. We're going to fix up the locker room. We're going to introduce conference rooms and three meeting rooms. And we're also going to install a residence bar. Then we're going to have the introduction of the KPI monitoring system. How this works is it monitors wages, general expenses, suppliers and buyers and it benchmarks them against uh, the industry that you're currently operating in. And it's done on a monthly basis, which allows you to be more proactive and to react to what's going on with your company. Also, we're going to introduce, introduce uh, a midweek special. So this will be at a lower discounted rate for members who just want to play between Monday and Friday. So this will target retired people or unemployed people who have this free time during the week, and then the busier periods of the weekend are left open for the full-time members. So what benefits does this have for your company? It stabilizes your financial position throughout the year. It provides higher quality facilities and services for your members, which will also help attract new members going forward. And it exploits the opportunities available for you in regards to um, your membership offerings. So you're probably wondering, what is this actually going to deliver for the St. Thomas Golf Club? So we feel that the deliverables here today would be an uptake of between uh, 20, 30 and 50 package membership um, over the next three years. So as Amy took you through, these are especially um, designed and targeted at um, 
people who want to play golf between Monday and Friday. Um, we believe that this will actually generate $36,000 uh, in revenue in the first year, $54,000 in the second, and $90,000 in the third. So looking at some of the costs involved in this, so actually um, we feel that the refurbishment of the clubhouse, the dining area and so on, we feel that we've allocated uh, $200,000 for this. In terms of the membership, how, mu how much are we actually going to charge for this discounted midweek membership fee? We have estimated that it would be $1,800 especially uh, targeted at these, um, this new customer base. And we feel that we've actually waived the initiation fee, um, so we feel that this is a very uh, attractive offer for, for these tar uh, targeted customers. So some of the KPIs involved in this, we feel that there is a failure of uptake of the midweek membership packages within 15, within 15 new members. Within the first year, we've um, moved to a contingency plan. So then looking at a, um, an over, a timeline for this recommendation, we have recommended over four key phases over a period of 12 months. So in the first three months, we'd organize the key performance indicator performance score sheet, which Amy mentioned earlier, and this is going to ensure that your financials are, are sustainable over the long run. We're going to develop the, the midweek specials, pointing out the different um, times that the, the customers can actually use the park and any benefits associated with this. And then we're going to apply for the planning provision for the, for the renovations. It is important to actually go to the local authorities and liaise with them to ensure that we can successfully build the, and refurbish the different aspects to our plan. We'd also like to design the new clubhouse, so we want to design the new area for the dining area, the new aesthetics, where we're going to put um, the, how many seats are we going to incorporate and so on. So within a three to six month period then, we'd like to advertise the new midweek packages within the local community of St. Thomas. And we feel that this is going to directly target our main uh, market. We're going to tender the contracts with, the construction, with a construction company to ensure that we have the highest quality and the lowest price when we're actually building um, the different uh, the expansion and refurbishment of the new dining room and so on. Within six to nine months then, we would like to begin the initial, the internal refurbishment. So this would look at the clubhouse, uh, updating the locker room to ensure that our current members are uh, fully satisfied with the uh, facilities that we offer and also updating the dining room. After 12 months then we would like to begin the external expansion. So this would actually expand and we would like to introduce um, three new conferences rooms and a residence bar. So now our second recommendation here is to enhance the quality of the services that are provide, currently provided by St. Thomas's Golf Club and to attract new members, but not only new members who are interested in golf, but the wider community of St. Thomas, which is a valuable um, tool that's not being um, utilised currently at the moment. So first we're going to have events. We're going to um, have weddings, corporate events and social events to bring in the community and provide a more stable revenue stream during the off-peak season when the golf course isn't being utilised. Then we're going to have a dining experience. Currently the dining um, is not really up to par in St. Thomas, so we're going to bring this to a higher standard. And then the local community come in on weekends for brunch and afternoon tea, which will also provide another revenue stream. Then we're going to implement a driving range. So this will be a covered area, so members can come in and um, use the driving range when it's the weather perhaps isn't golf permitting. And also students can come in and use this at a lower cost. There'll be no membership fee for this, so get them involved in the sport as well. And then we're going to re-energise the employees. Currently the employees are feeling a bit um, demoralised, so we want to bring them, re-energise them and get them more involved in the company. So we're going to do a job rotation. So the uh, current employees will rotate jobs, so they'll get an experience of each aspect of the company, and then this will make them more involved in the golf club itself. We're also going to have training programmes for them to uh, up their skills and help them feel more uh, better about what they do. And then we're going to have performance reviews to allow them to be monitored and to point at maybe where they could improve on further and to highlight what they're doing well to boost their morale. So the benefits of this are you're exploiting your off-season trade and generating a new revenue stream. It increases your morale of your employees which will then be passed on to the golf club itself and to the members will feel this difference. It expands your dining experience. You currently have the dining hall. We're just going to utilise it further. It attracts new members and also attracts the wider community as a whole. And then as I mentioned, it generates a new revenue stream. So we do realise that there are a lot of different aspects involved in this recommendation. So you're probably wondering, what is, again, what is this going to do for St. Thomas Golf Club? So we feel that the deliverables here today will be an increase of membership to above 500 me new members over, over a three-year period, which would actually um, be a total increase of 30% overall. And also this would actually 
generate a lot of revenue for the for St. Thomas's Golf Club, and we had estimated that it would be about four hundred, just over four hundred thousand dollars. So again, looking at some of the costs, so we feel that the construction of the driving range will cost around twenty thousand um, dollars. Employee upskilling, we feel that we can do this internally, and we feel that uh, for just kind of general expenses, it would uh, be estimated of two thousand dollars. In terms of revamping the menu, so we're actually going to um, coordinate with the two um, uh, chefs and the food and beverage manager that we have at present. So we feel that this is actually a way of successfully reducing the cost involved. Um, so we feel that the revamp of the menu um, would be uh, estimated at $1,500. So some of the KPIs again. Um, a famous management consultant, Tom Peters, once said, what, get, what gets measured gets done. And we, uh, me and the team, uh, the team and I both feel this is very important. So we feel that a failure of new membership of uptake of uh, 430 new members within two years, we would actually move to our contingency plan. So looking at an ad timeline again, so we feel that it's going to be all over an 18 month period. So within the first three months, we're going to redesign the menu. As I mentioned earlier, that we're actually going to utilize the staff that are already in place. You already have the resources available to you. So we're going to engage with them, and we're going to talk to the, um, the food and beverage manager and the head chef to get their ideas and see what they get their input. This is another way of actually of employee engagement, which we feel will be very beneficial to St. Thomas's. Um, so looking at uh, so moving on, then we look at tendering the construction contracts to the developers. Um, and we'd also like to develop the different staff uh, training programs. So Amy took you through a couple of the aspects involved in that, but we'd like to um, actually nail out the finer details. So within six to, three to six months then, we'd like to launch the new menu and advertise that again within the local area, within St. Thomas's. And we'd also like to advertise especially the um, afternoon tea, which we feel that will brought, bring in and attract many new customers. We'd also like to begin the employee initiatives within that period. Within six to 18 months then, we'd like to begin the construction of the driving range. Again, Amy mentioned that this is going to fully utilize the opportunity, take advantage of the opportunity that we're currently not using in the off-peak season. And we'd like to advertise this new driving range, again, within the local area. After 18 months then, we feel that that's a long enough construction period, so we'd like to launch the driving range, and we'd like to begin the different events within the clubhouse. And then ongoing, it's important to ensure that these different, uh, these different recommendations are successfully implemented. So we feel that we should have a continuous monitor and review period. Mm -hmm. Lee, uh, Lee Iacocca once said, the correct action is wrong when it's taken too late. Likewise, we feel that these aren't individual recommendations, but a collective strategy going forward. So this is why we've implemented an overall timeline. So as you can see, zero to three months, we'll begin our KPI performance review on a month-on-month -month basis to review the variable cost and where we can improve the efficiency within the company. Likewise, we'll apply for a planning permission. Uh, three to nine months, we'll begin refurbishing, advertising, beginning construction of the driving range and then the general construction, which we've broken down also. And in the 18-month period, we'll open the driving range to the public and likewise review our performance, also maintaining our key, uh, key performance indicators and um, throughout. So we are very much aware that with every recommendation there is a level of risk associated with it. So in order to combat against this, we've put in place some risk mitigation factors and also contingency plans to accompany each of our recommendations. So first of all, in relation to our sustainable business plan model, obviously the main risk we feel with this is the fact we could possibly go into insolvency or receivership. So to combat against this, we feel that, um, or sorry, to mitigate this risk, we feel that this can be offset and actually turned into profitable by the revenue generation that would be coming in through our new developments. However, if we do hit a point that we're not generating enough, me enough revenue to make these plans sustainable, then we would look towards our contingency of initiating a student training school. This is getting students in at ground level and making them sure that they are members of our future and we'll have them on a long-term basis going forward on the client base. In relation to our bringing you to the PAR um, initiative, we feel that the main, risk, and the main risk associated with this is a lack of interest or a lack of uptake. So as Amy and Fiona took you through, we'll be advertising and promoting all of the initiatives that we are interacting. And we do feel that by ensuring a high level of quality and service associated with each of our recommendations, that this risk can most, assert, most certainly be mitigated. In relation to our contingency plan, the main reason that this was not our primary focus, as we feel it is not as sustainable as our recommendations in the long term, but it is a marvelous opportunity when dealing with professional sport. We go out into the PGA Tour and hope to source long-term tournament deals and attractions that would bring a massive amount of revenue into St. Thomas Community Club, or Golf Club, pardon me. So to summarize, 
what is it exactly we're going to do? We are creating a sustainable business model for, um, for St. Thomas Business Club, as well as that we're upgrading facilities and making improvements across the board. Why is it exactly we're doing this? We want to ensure the long-term future of St. Thomas Golf Club, and as well as that, we want to make sure that we keep to our morals and to our pride, and that we maintain the highest level of services and facilities associated with your organization. Who are the main people we see being involved in this? We feel that this would be Rob Mason and the staff, as well as the board. And also, we do have to factor in external contractors that we'd be bringing in to, to um, aid in our refurbishments. And when? We see this being rolled out as of Monday morning and being an ongoing process over the next three years. On behalf of myself and my team, I'd like to thank you all for your attention during today's presentation. And we hope through our recommendations that we have definitely ensured the St. Thomas Golf and Community Club is definitely above the bar and scoring a hole in one. Thank you, and we've any questions. Um, thank you. Um, I did pay attention to your uh, presentation, actually, and I'm, I'm especially pleased with the fact that you're making time available so that unemployed people can play golf. Um, <laughs> one thing I, well, it was lacking in, in your presentation, there was lots of, lots of sort of numbers thrown around, but did you prepare a, pr a forecast or a perform, perform a financial statement? Um, yes. Here we go. We thank you very much. <laughs> May. We broke down the capital investment uh, to 200,000 specifically to reinvigorating the, 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 the club itself. So as you can see, the breakdown, residence bar, general clubhouse, we've costed this across the three year period. Now likewise, we had the funds, um, over 200,000 in your short -term, short, short term investment plan, but you're only receiving 1% uh, interest on this. And we feel that the return on investment, um, over 60% over a short per period of time, we feel this is better invested in the likes of uh, a capital investment such as the club. Now, two years ago, it was five hundred thousand dollars, well, four hundred some thousand dollars in that fund. You've burned half of it due to operating losses of, a pro of more than half a or a quarter of a million dollars in the last two years, and that fund is sitting at uh, is sitting at two hundred thousand or two hundred fifty thousand or so. Um, how what what are you going to do to stem the losses? I mean, you're basically you're, you're, if your operation continues at its current pace, you're going to have burned up that uh, that operating reserve just financing the ongoing losses. And, but yet you've allocated it here towards uh, capital improvements. Um, exactly. Oh, sorry. Well, um, just to build on Lorcan's point, um, one of the main reasons we're actually utilizing this money is because it has seen significant losses over the past two years. So we feel that instead of actually letting it sit there and waste away, that we can put it towards improving your organization. And as well as that, we are aware that a line of credit of 450000 is available to your company, put up against collateral of 300000 based on your assets. So we do feel that this is money well invested in the long term and it will stop um, diminishing returns. Okay, so you show me a capital investment schedule. Do you have also a performing income statement? We have um, the return on investment specific to the incomes that you'll be uh, receiving through your new membership, as well as your special midweek special. Mm -hmm. um, and this would, this would be the return on investment we'd be anticipating. But likewise, we are um, anticipating- But you haven't prepared a performing income statement. We are analyzing through our key performance indicators over a month on month basis to get the proper appropriate figures and then to readjust our variable cost so that we can pr produce a, a proper in, um, income statement. Brian, you're next. Yeah, can we stay on this income statement for a minute? I have a couple of very interesting questions. Um, first of all, the initiation fee is currently $1,000 for the membership, uh, a promissory note of six, which is basically forgiven over seven years. So it's a net of $1,000. You're showing $7,000 in your presentation. Are we going back to $7,000 or are we still staying at $1,000? We are basing this on the 3,600, including your initial initiation fee of 1,000, and this is the projections for your new membership All over right. that growth period. And likewise, the midweek special is 1,800. So this is midweek. So blended then. This is blended. Exactly. Perfect. Next question: the new the new memberships are they equity? The are they equity members? Are they they're paying substantially less than my other members? Are they going to be owners in the club as well? Exactly, that would be based on that membership scheme, but we're trying to branch out uh, specifically to the other demographics. But, so but would they be equity members? No, no. no, they'd be the principal members no. within the, the group. It's just to target a new um, segment that you currently haven't targeted before. But they're not equity members. They're not equity okay. members. No, that the full-time members who pay the full fee who are also who can avail of the club seven That's days great. a week. Yeah. So next, you still have 430 new members in your presentation or an uptake to 430, the slide was kind of inconsistent with what you were presenting. 
is it 430 new members, which is a 250% increase, or an uptake to 430, which is a 15% increase? It's an uptake. Um, so currently, uh, St. Thomas is not. Uh, okay, so it's an uptake. Yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. perfect. I'm good. Morning. I'm really fascinated about um, sustainability of the club and, and uh, notions of off season trade. Uh, how is the driving range going to work in the winter? Can you, can you help me with that? There's three yeah. feet of snow on the ground and it's 15 or 20 below Celsius. Yeah. How's the driving range work? The driving range is in an enclosed area, so it's um, closed up one area, so the, the second, the back bit, would, there'd be no wall at the back and you can hit out to the front. So it would be covered in netting though to ensure the balls don't go flying into the golf course. So the netting then during the winter months would ensure that the snow doesn't actually fall on the ground as well to mitigate that. And also then the maintenance would clear up any snow that does make its way in. And then there will be heaters at the back for the golf members as well, which obviously will be wearing uh, coats and gloves. Okay, and you're going to build this whole little whole facility for $20,000, do I understand that correctly? Yeah, it's just um, a partition state um, wall. It's not a, a structural building. It's just a partition wall. Bye, Thank man. you. Hi. Hi. <laughs> so your your key uh, key driver here is an uptake in membership, short term, medium term, to staunch the bleeding. Um, give me uh, two or three specific examples of how you plan to do this, given that you uh, you have a declining economy, uh, a flattening or shrinking population, an aging demographic. Uh, and usage in the sport is dropping. Again, given those negatives, how are you going to kind of climb over that and grow it? Well, by targeting, having the weddings and the conferences, you're targeting bit businesses and the community as a whole. So not it doesn't have to be people who are interested in golf. It's just instead of going to a hotel for your wedding, you go to the golf course to have beautiful scenery. So that's a new demographic. And then we have the afternoon tea as well. Is a, a cheaper option for the community. Obviously, they have the poor economic climate, so it wouldn't be a high cost for them to be able to go into the golf club and have a nice afternoon tea with beautiful scenery. Mm -hmm. And then the last bit, Bob. I want to know um, <laughs> specifically the uh, you want to build a golf membership, and I want to understand a couple of specifics on how you're going to drive a lot of golfers to this course in a very short period of time um, and build and suck a bunch of money out of them. Um, just to build on Amy's point, um, we are aware that golf is incredibly popular within Canada. And we do feel by facilitating the increased facilities, currently members aren't particularly happy with the, with the locker rooms, the dining rooms, the cafeteria, and there's a lack of a residence bar. So we do feel by, by initiating all of these incentives, we, might, we should be able to draw an increased participation rate from the domestic public, and as well as that, we would hope to be able to draw some members away from neighboring clubs or um, people that may be within okay, thanks. possible residence. Awesome, thanks. thank you. Uh, if we could go to the uh, risk and contingency slide. Uh, with, the, with both of these, I feel like the contingency is uh, not necessarily, uh, you know, by putting all this money into these two projects, we're not building the infrastructure for those two contingencies. So I'm just wondering how you've decided that that was the fallback and where are we going to get the money to create them? Well the money that's going into the driving range will be used at the students training. They can go in the driving range initially to generate some interest and maybe when you're a new golfer it's not best to start off on an 18 course hole, or hole course. So we feel that by bringing them to the driving range it will generate an interest which then can be brought forward into the golf course and then they will become members as they move along in life. And then the folks on the tournaments attractions as well, we feel that this would bring in interest to the community and also generate um, revenue in the community of all the events that will go on surrounding the tournament. So you feel that you will get back to the, the capital set. And we actually feel that you um, uh, currently you have the infrastructure there in place. You're one of the top uh, 50 golf courses within Canada. So we feel that you have the basic amenities there for um, to attract the different uh, tournaments to take place within um, our St. Thomas's uh, golf club. So we feel that it would be a, a pretty solid um, contingency plan. Okay. So I was going to ask a question about the financial, your financial proposal and, and how you would pay for it all and if you really recognized where, where we're at. But I think my colleagues have probed you on that sufficiently. Um, let's pretend that we're all um, either allergic to or averse to uh, business jargon. Can you, uh, and we have some board members here who are you know, simply interested board members, what, what is a KPI? 
costing system. And what would that give us, that given the reams of data on membership and per area costs and revenues, what would that give us that we don't already have? One minute. If I may, the key performance indicator uh, performance score sheet is basically breaking down. So that's that's too much jargon already. <laughs> Apologies. Um, what we're trying to do is figure out the best way to make your company, your golf club, more efficient. Okay. But we already got we've already got a lot of this information here. What, what is it going to give us that we don't already have and know? I mean, we've got a great financial director put this all together. Well, for anyone, the benefits of it is on a monthly basis, so it allows you to be on point to react more proactively, whereas your, most of your financial statements are on a year-on-year basis when it's maybe too late to solve the problem and the further problem has developed further. So it allows you to be at point to react. How much is this system going to cost on top of the 200K in, in, in driving range improvements, which we already did last year to the tune of $300,000 anyway? This is a small expense on the basis that it's benchmarked against the industry and other golf clubs. So it's just a research based on where... So you think that because my financial director put this together on an annual basis that he doesn't have the data on a monthly basis and therefore That's we need to spend? Thank you. Thank you, Thank Thank you. you very much.
this thing on. So I can't actually hear myself. Can I a little bit? No, 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 it's okay. I, I only can. Uh, uh. Yeah, hello, live stream. Uh, my name's Chris Moyer. We've, uh, we've really enjoyed the case competition here, uh, and we hope you are too. Um, I just wanted to give a big, big shout out to Jared Zinkowicz. Isn't that man good looking? Isn't he? Oh, hilarious. Good looking, well dressed. I don't know if you saw my tweet, ladies and gentlemen, but uh, if you want to get down to, to RU here, uh, this man is available. L let me tell you. Anyways, in all seriousness, we're going to be back online here in just a couple of minutes. Uh, Pedro, looking good as always. Thank you for, for having us here. And uh, we'll, be, uh, we'll be seeing you shortly. Take care, guys.
Yeah, they got three
Welcome back, everyone. So here it is, the final presentation of 2014's RRU IUCC competition. Are you looking forward to it? All right. Let's bring him in, team number three. thank you, the board of St. Thomas Country Club and Golf, for having us here today. When you came to our company a few weeks ago, you proposed that you wanted to look into the future. You wanted to see what you could work on in order to address a few of the issues you have had in the past. I would like to introduce myself. We are here um, as a part of uh, Perry Cox Consulting. My name is Robin Worrell, and I'm here with my colleagues, Ben Vaughn, Amelia Trainer, and Charles Joyce. First and foremost, we want to address the fact that St. Thomas, we looked at the town and we saw everything, and we saw that there's been a lot of suffering. There's been a lot going on, a lot of small businesses closing down, a lot of things that need to be looked at, a lot of things, a lot of issues that need to be addressed. When we did that, we saw some potential. We saw some potential that your company has, and we really want to address the issues that we thought were maybe contributing to some of the losses you've had and how we can work on them moving forward. The three key issues that we pinpointed First and, four point, first and foremost was employee morale and management. We really want to make sure that we can create an environment that is good for employees <clears throat> and motivates employees to work harder each and every day and make them proud to be working as a part of this place, a part of a place that they're a very main part of considering this is a big part of the service industry. The second issue that we wanted to focus on was the financial health of your company. You have been suffering oh, some uh, net losses in the previous two uh, few quarters. So we really want to make sure moving forward that we can figure out how to address this in order to make sure that maybe there's more profit moving forward. The third main issue that we wanted to focus on was attracting new members. We've seen some decline in the numbers going down, and we know that maybe there might not be a clientele base. So we want to give people a reason to join the country club, or at least come and play golf. A reason to go out every day and just have a relaxing round of golf. A reason to be a part of this place, and it's affordable, and something that makes them happy to be a part of their community. So before we could make any executive decisions about what we wanted to recommend for your company, we needed to look at a situation analysis. So first we looked at some of the internal strengths of the company. Uh, one of the best strengths that, we, that you have is being ranked 50th across the nation. 
You're the 50th best golf course out of 850 golf courses in Canada. So that's something we really think you should capitalize on. Uh, you also have renowned environmental prestige. You've been certified by an environmental board, as well as increased capacity for a wide a, a range of golfers. We then looked at some of the weaknesses that you have as a company. There's low employee morale, and that's something that really affects your bottom line. Why aren't your employees motivated to work as hard as they can for your company? You also have a very old clubhouse, and that's something that your golfers are kind of embarrassed about, and that's not good for your company. Also, there's a decrease in members, and that's something that you can really work to improve on. We then looked at some of the external factors of your company. So uh, currently, you can capitalize on private events, such as weddings, um, as well as increasing the number of tournaments that you're helping out with. And that will be a, a big increase in your bottom line. As well as there's uh, neighboring Port Stanley, which has a uh, residential as well as a vacation population. And we think that that's a good population that you might be able to tap into. We then looked at some of the threats in the current uh, situation. <coughs> the golf industry is not recession proof. Uh, unfortunately, in 2008, you were, suffered a lot of decrease in uh, membership just from the recession, as well as seasonality affects the golf industry d dramatically. Uh, the St. Thomas economy suffered in 2008, as we previously stated, and there's also a segmented market in the golf industry. So moving forward, we had a lot to think about when we looked at your situation, and uh, we came up with quite a few options. So one of the first options is to allocate current funds towards clubhouse renovations. This would involve increasing club membership fees. Uh, a second option is to close during the winter months. Hopefully this will streamline summer and spring operations. You could start an HR initiative to try and motivate your employees to work harder and better for your company. Try to diversify your seasonal revenue streams. Uh, focus on holding events and tournaments to try and get in some more revenue. Uh, fundraising of this would go towards more clubhouse renovation as well as course renovations. As well as creating a stratified membership system, uh, this would incentivize certain members to pay higher fees and they would receive exclusive clubhouse access as well as different benefits. So when we looked at all of these options, it gave us a lot to think about. And we had to figure out where do we begin. When working in the service industry, first and foremost, the best way to create a sustainable competitive advantage is starting with your employees. It's something that's volatile and we want to make sure that the employees know what they're doing, they know their jobs, and how we can work forward. And that's where we want to start. We want to start with the employees. Because if we can get the employees to be happy about where they're working for, and how they look at how they can help the property and everything moving forward, then they can make the members want to be there. They can create relationships with the members. And this, hopefully, will uh, lead to more membership. That can also contribute to the residents in the surrounding areas. Maybe they can become members, maybe they can become more involved in the community, as well as the public in general. But what we really wanted to focus on is that it all starts with the employees. What can we do in order to motivate the, motivate the employees to work for your company and be happy and find this high employee morale moving forward? So we came up with an HR initiative plan. So that would be our first step. Our recommendation, first step, start with an HR initiative. Our second step would want to address the idea of going into these winter operations and utilizing a capacity that you haven't had in the past and maybe giving this opportunity that you can look for. And then third, we would want to look into clubhouse improvements because we want to address the members. If we can get the employees happy, maybe utilize some open capacity, we can then increase the members and give them the nice clubhouse that they really want to be a part of. So, as we go into how to improve employee morale, there are a lot of things that can be done. First and foremost, we need the general manager to sit down with the employees and talk to them, tell them what their positions are, work with them, see what their capabilities are, and really communicate with them how they can be stronger moving forward and how they can be comfortable with their position and make sure that they're comfortable communicating what their skills are and what they need to work on. So we really want to make sure there's that open communication as we move forward. We also like the idea of maybe implementing some sort of employee bonding events where employees can get together and they can just be happy to be together and work with the general manager and work with each other and maybe if there's off time in the golf course they can all go out and play around with golf. Maybe they can spend some time with even some of the members and it's something that makes them excited to go to work every day. That's something that we really want to enforce moving forward because I think it's a key part of employee morale. We really want to also talk about the idea of monthly performance reviews. 
We want this to be a two-way system too. So the general manager can be doing a performance review of everyone that works below him and below them, as well as they can also be reviewing the general manager. Because we want to make sure this is a two-way street and that everyone can work together as well as possible. Because we think moving forward, if, you're, if you are able to get employees that are excited to go to work every day, know exactly what their responsibilities are, know where they can improve, and know where they can really use their best strengths, you're going to have a place that makes members want to be there as well. And we really want to enforce that moving forward. So this brings us to the idea of winter operations. We here at Peacocks believe in innovation. And currently, you have an extremely seasonal product in the service industry with the golf industry. So uh, obviously, as a, as a Canadian operation, you have extreme seasonality. As in the winter months, golf is impossible. So what we are trying to recommend to you is diversification of your services. So through winter operations, uh, you'll be able to increase your uh, participation in the, in the country club as you increase awareness and increase the public image around the country club. Um, we would like to do this through uh, three main winter operations, the first of which being cross-country skiing facilitation. So this really leverages your environmental assets. Currently, you have uh, an extremely lucrative uh, golf course where you have a beautiful environment. Now, we think that uh, that would generate demand for cross-country skiing potentially in the off season, which would then have no effect on your golf season uh, when the snow melts. Uh, we think that cross-country skiing operations will also increase locker rentals during the off seasons as they could store their other clothes in the, in the clubhouse lockers. We would like to work with an ice hockey league. You have a massive pond that we could potentially open up for public, public skating. We could create a public league play or potentially hold uh, pond hockey tournaments for the local general public. And lastly, we would like to maintain all of this with lean clubhouse operations. So we're talking about providing a simple food and beverage service with minimal costs. So that provides basic amenities such as uh, hot chocolate, uh, simple fare, uh, so that they have a warm place to come back to and a safe place to store their gear while they go out and participate in winter activities such as skating or cross-country skiing. By beginning uh, winter operations, St. Thomas will mitigate the seasonality effects of participating in the golf industry and increase their profit margins and revenue streams. So that brings us to the last point, which is clubhouse renovations. So currently, as a part of the service industry, we, need, we have dissatisfied members. We have members who are ashamed to bring public or guest golfers down to their locker rooms because they don't feel that they are uh, nice enough or clean enough, or what have you. And we believe that uh, moving forward, we need to address this dissatisfaction. There was also talk of the dining services not being up to snuff, as you could say. Uh, we have an extreme demand for modernized uh, catering services and dining facilities on site. So moving forward, uh, we would like to begin a renovation plan for your country club. And that needs to start with evaluating the financials. We have a greens committee in place, which works as a sounding board for communicating with the members and players. So we believe that by working with the greens committee, we can assess the needs and the demand of the public and what they're looking for in potential renovations to our clubhouse. Now we know that there are two key issues with the current state of the clubhouse being the dining facilities and locker rooms, but we believe that there may be other things that they might want to see or specific ways that we can improve the dining facilities or locker facilities uh, so as to minimize our costs. So we would like to work with the Greens Committee to evaluate the financial needs of this project. Then we would like to address the two main concerns being the locker rooms, and the interior renovations, such as the dining facilities. Now, moving forward, we need to first implement our HR initiative. That begins with talking with all our employees, getting them on the same page, meeting with them, and generally just getting them excited to be here. It's very important. We feel that by doing so, our members will want to be here. We'll encourage more members to come. And then they're also going to stay. They're not going to want to leave and go to other country clubs. We also need to get rid of the promissory note obligation for initiation costs. Right now, it's not really doing much except for losing potential customers. It costs a thousand up front, and we feel that there is a lot, large market for that. It's a low cost, and it's really 
we think there's a lot of demand for it. And the 6,000 cost that's waived if you stay there for seven years isn't really doing much. I mean, you're not going to earn any extra revenue. They're still paying membership fees. There's no need to do so. We also need to begin to implement our winter plan as soon as possible. We'd like to start with November 2012 as an implementation plan and go through the winter of 2013. <laughs> on top of that, we need to use our Greens Committee to research where we need to improve and what we're lacking on. We begin with budget applications, allocations toward our clubhouse renovations. We need to do some research, go around, talk to local contractors, see what we'd have to invest in order to get this up and running to be you know, a nice clubhouse that has that old-timey feel from the outside, but modern appliances on the inside, very comfortable for our members. And then year two, we'd like to renovate the clubhouse locker room. This is key. This is driving away potential profits from the public non-member golfers. They come in, they come with their member friends, or they come by themselves, and they really just, they don't want to go into the locker room. It's disgusting, it's clean, poor quality lockers. Renovate that, get it up to par, and we can see increased revenue from there. Now, normally I would say, in order to make money, you have to spend money. However, our first year shows no cost. We'll be very marginal to work with our employees. I'd say at most $100 on just little gifts to bring them out, candy, a little award, nothing serious, very negligible in the long run. We'll have increased revenues from the employees being very happy to be there. People will want to spend money, want to interact with their employees. It'll be friendly. This is a community, We're really working with them. So granted, there's no measurable profit. However, we feel that it'll increase demand in the long run. Next, once we've implemented the winter plan, we're expecting general and administrative costs of 78000 This is based off the 585000 number we already have. From November to April, that's four months, and so that is approximately one-third of the general administrative costs of $178,000. we are hoping to operate at only 40% of that. We don't want to cut down on service quality. We want to cut down on the general cost of being open and running. The benefit of this is the 178000 I mentioned before we will not be spending to open. Thus, we'll have a net cost decrease of 100000 On top of that, we're expecting a 17000 profit in food and beverage sales. We'd like to increase our margin from 11%, which it currently is, to 20% by having less staff on. We don't need all these people. We don't need a food, a chef, kitchen manager to serve hot chocolate. It's really unnecessary. We don't even need a head chef, part-time college student, part-time high school student. Low cost, 70000 profit. Bottom line effect of 117000 Then, in year two, the implementation of the locker renovations. We're estimating a fairly conservative estimate of twenty to 30000 We don't really anticipate that much, but you never know going forward. The benefit, we're anticipating 1400 in additional locker revenue. This is a conservative estimate based off of the public to member ratio. From there, we gather that we'd see a 10% increase in the locker revenue. Now, long-term goals. By year five, we'd like to have the dining services renovated and up to par. We want it nice, clean, comfortable, good quality. We want people to come and hang out. They don't have to come golf, they can come for dinner. We're a country club and a golf course. Also, we'd like to have a net increase in members. We talked before about getting rid of the promissory note, and hopefully that will bridge the gap between us losing members and us gaining members. Currently, we're losing 5 to 10 percent, whereas we know the Canada golf industry, the people who are leaving, same amount of people are coming back in. So we think having a ranked 50 in the country golf course should be well above that. We have an incredible course. The Canada Open was here. Really need to leverage that. So by year five, we'd like to have our first net increase in members. This is extremely conservative. And then by year 10, we want fully functional event facilities. This would mean for weddings, for receptions, everything. Bring in more business. There's a great profit margin there. And if we can expand the facilities, we can experience definite growth. OK, so as we're moving forward, we've given you this long, extended 10-year plan, short term, long term. If this goes well, we really like the idea of expanding winter operations and really diversifying the portfolio that you have. We also would really like to accelerate the, the renovations plans if we find success 
from the other parts, we can then maybe put more funds towards renovating the clubhouse even sooner to maybe even further increase that uh, the, the members coming in and increasing the amount of membership moving forward. <coughs> We'd also really like to maybe increase the tournaments that are held there. You have the capacity and we want to make sure we now have the facilities to hold these people and to give them a reason to want to hold their events on our facilities. However, if this doesn't go well and we don't find success, if employees aren't being motivated, if, mem if we aren't getting more new members, or if this winter plan just doesn't go well and there isn't anyone that wants to actually use the facilities, we would like to reevaluate your, re your overall business model. We really want to look at what some of your strengths are and figure out how we can leverage them moving forward. We think that you have the capacity and you have the means. We just want to figure out how we can use that, especially in the St. Thomas environment, because we don't want to forget that we're in a town that is still suffering. And we need to make sure that we can, whatever we do, it will match what also our surrounding environment is a part of. If this all really doesn't go well and we see a lot of failure, we would like to explore the option of selling to club links, something we discussed. We see so much potential, though, in your facilities that we don't think that this is something that really needs to explore, be explored unless there really is no capital to fund all of the ideas that we've come up with. Or if we can't get all the new members to come in and we're not meeting the capacity that you have available. And Club Links can maybe have the capital to renovate the facilities, to draw in new members, and really create an entire new business model. But that's not the path we wanted to go down. So as we went through all of this, we, we took you through our plan. And in conclusion, we felt that First and foremost, if we can really work on that HR initiative, we can get employees that want to be there. Employees that want to keep members around, draw in new members, and create an environment that is sustainable and competitive in the long run. And we really want to make sure that if we can diversify your portfolio with these winter offerings, we're really creating that sustainable competitive advantage. We really suggest that this is a way to not just take control of the market you already have, but tap into even more resources to meet the capacity that you have and really create a sustainable com competitive advantage in the long run. Thank you. Thanks for your presentation. Um, <clears throat> We're in a rather dire uh, financial situation and you're offering me candy. In year one, uh, you've got no costs but no benefits. And yet, the past situation is, is that we've lost a quarter of a million dollars over the last two years in operating this club. I'd really like to see what you're going to do to stem those losses. We believed when we were looking at it, as much as the financial issue was so prominent, we really wanted to feel that we can't really tap into our target market or bring in new members that are going to give us the revenues that we need if we don't have the people that are going to be able to make the facilities as successful as they can be. If we don't have the employees that want to be there and that are working hard every single day, and we don't have an environment that's going to make draw in new members, we don't feel that... So we have a financial problem and you're going to give me a, a warm hug? We understand that currently your budget is set. Correct. So that would mean that we have limited expenditures available to us for renovations or other implementations of operations. So we believe that through a low so did cost... did you consider the fact that maybe we should modify the budget? We considered that, but we were operating under the assumption that the budget was set. Very good. Brian, you're... I'll pass for the moment, Maureen. <clears throat> Uh, I love some of your wintertime ideas, having lived in Ontario for a sh very short period of time. Um, I'm wondering, though, about the balance between your recommendation that we improve our employee relations and improve our HR practice and bring employee morale up, but lay off how many people in the wintertime? I'm, I'm, I'm not seeing how that's going to work. Um, to me, if you start laying off people for seven months of the year when they're used to working 12, I'm not sure how that improves employee morale. We would really like to work with the assumption that we really have to communicate with the employees about it. If they feel that they want to be on throughout the year, we might really have to consider the extra costs that would come into the networking capital, the extra networking capital of running the facilities. We don't want to automatically just lay the people off. It's something that we need to be more considerate of, definitely moving forward, and see if they do want to work. That option is there for them, especially the people that are the higher up working right under the general manager. We definitely think that may, they might still be needed. Just like to add on to that. Doesn't well. that throw your numbers off? That'll yeah. throw off. Okay. Yeah. We also, we'd like them to stay on working part time, so we can't keep them there the whole time. I think they could understand that 
we're operating at a huge loss in the winter. We're seeing no money come in and we're feeding out the same expenses. If they want to stay here, which we hopefully can spur their commitment, then this is a necessary sacrifice. And lastly, if I may, we believe that through the implementation of these winter operations, and by potentially allowing them to work reduced hours so that we can have lean operations for the winter, winter time, we think that this will create uh, an increased public uh, uh, appreciation of the country club and will create further pride of these employees. They will want to work here and we will thus become a more profitable, sustainable business where they can have their full-time hours uh, during the golf on season for a longer period of time. Unfortunately, we believe that if we can't cut costs during the winter, that we will, that our business, that your business, excuse me, will become unsustainable, and they may potentially be permanently out of a job. So we believe that this may be the lesser of two evils. Thank you. Okay. So you have HR turn around to get the service levels right, and then you can go after new members. That's what I've heard. I also heard that you really don't see a net increase in members for five years. So is it going to take five years to right-size this HR problem? Or uh, I, I, there's a disconnect for me? Please explain. We were hoping that it would be more immediate. And we felt that if we can immediately speak with the employees and communicate with them, that that would almost be just something that would really happen right away. So we're hoping that maybe it might not directly correlate with new members. So that might be a little bit more year one, year two. But we're really hoping the employee part is immediate. If it's not, that's something that we have to communicate and address moving forward. We believe that it will hopefully lead to new members. We can't directly correlate it, of course, though. So by extension, I, I'm a bit concerned because there's, you know, you cut costs or you raise revenues, you raise revenues, you amortize fixed costs. Um, I didn't see anything here about any any effort or inkling of an effort in driving revenues in your core competencies, um, assuming that you can flip that HR problem fairly quickly. Give me three specific things that you're planning to do, uh, or no, I'm going to reframe this. Why are you not planning to aggr aggressively attempt to increase core membership? Please explain that to me. Five minutes. We believe it would take massive investment. We'd have to completely renovate the clubhouse. We'd have to have top tier services. We'd have to make people really want to be there. Core members, they're hard to attract. And we have that large initiation fee. We're waiving the six year, $1,000 a year cost to try and spur new members, increase demand. And our five year net increase was a very conservative estimate. We're not exactly sure how many people are coming into the St. Thomas area. We'd like to be as conservative and po as possible in this and hopefully recognize greater gains going forward. The last question, do you have a marketing plan? The marketing plan moving forward would be, we really liked the fact, as much as it's a threat, we also felt it was a strength that you have a stratif stratified market to work with. And we think that because we don't have that elite membership and we might not be able to attain it, we want to be able to keep the member, non-member fees and in order to attack, be pretty much just be consistent and not really make people feel more comfortable about the fees that they're putting in as they enter the golf course. So what I understand is you, you don't really have a sales plan per se, a marketing plan per se, you just kind of cruise and, and hope it works out and referrals and whatnot. Would that be correct? If I may, we do plan to enact a social media plan to get our name out into the business, into the industry. Um, but we're also hoping that word of mouth will be a really strong uh, thing on our side. Hopefully people will tell, oh, you know, they really improved their operations over there. They really, they're improving their clubhouse. They're improving their courses. They're improving their employee services. So hopefully word of mouth will be a big thing that's on our side. Okay, thank you. Um, <clears throat> I just need to, one thing, <clears throat> excuse me, clarified, and that is the uh, removal of the promissory note. Does that mean you, it's just $1,000 one time, that's it? Currently, the, the system that we have in place is that there's a $1,000 upfront initiation fee for members. Yeah. However, uh, we also have an existing incentive that uh, over the course of the next six years, there's another $1,000 totaling at $7,000. However, uh, most, of, most new members are not paying the, the $1,000 and are waiting until uh, seven years so that the $6,000 is waived. So currently, we're not seeing a lot of return on that $6,000 <coughs> extension. And so uh, we believe that this extension is asking for a large commitment from potential new members. 
which in this current economic situation are uh, concerned to make that kind of seven year commitment to a golf, to a golf club. And so we believe that by waiving that uh, extension, we believe that new members will be less tentative and more likely to sign on with just an initial fee. Okay. Uh, and, and maybe I've been a little bit uh, too close to uh, the problem to see it, but uh, with the high cost and the poor quality and the low morale in the kitchen, is it just time to get rid of the chef and move on? It all comes down to how that first communication meeting goes. We really need to talk, and if we really don't see that there, that would be one of the contingency plans. It would have to be exploring other options. Okay, thanks. So my, my colleague uh, took my question on uh, clarifying, removing the promissory note. Uh, how much, just very briefly, how much would it with the initiation fee be then? We're going to keep it at 1000 Okay. So my, my question then, um, so levying members for shared services is a, is a, is, is a challenge. Uh, arguably, the area that you've come to visit is a, is a, a failed case in point. Uh, you'd mentioned that you assumed the budget was set. How would you increase your budget? How would you advance higher levies on, on members? Sketch out a plan. Something that we discussed was maybe having the committees sit down and discuss where their money was going towards. So the $200 that the members are putting into their fees, we maybe wanted to talk about reallocating that to another area or maybe increasing the budget to make sure that it was specifically going towards renovating the clubhouse. One minute. Uh, th that doesn't really cover it for me. So I'm talking about increasing fees generally across your 430 principal members. How would you advance that with these members? I don't mean a couple of us sitting in committees. Uh, one of the options we spoke about was creating a stratified uh, plan for our members. So having some members pay a premium for higher quality services, for example, a special lounge. So all your examples, how would you engage the members? Uh, I think that a lot of members are willing to pay a premium for those higher quality services. So uh, and, and access to a gold lounge, uh, some employees are, are sorry, some uh, golfers are willing to pay for, for better service, better quality. Uh, and creating that stratified market would also give us the ability to cater to the less affluent market. Thank you. Um, That's in, I'd like to thank everyone very much. Uh, I, a couple thank yous I'd like to do <laughs> just before we turn off the live stream. So uh, feel free to continue at the door and if you like. Uh, no pressure's keeping you here, but I definitely want to say thank you to a few key players in this. Let's start with uh, our competing teams, Simon Fraser University, University of Winnipeg, University of Vermont, South Alberta Institute of Technology, Dublin Institute of Technology, University of Florida, Concordia University, Okanagan College, Western University, Brock University, University of Alberta, University of Guelph Humber, Northern Alberta Institute of Technology, McMaster University, Langara College, University of Southern Indiana, University of Saskatchewan, Wilfrid Laurier University, Royal Roads University, and Douglas College. Else? I'd also like to thank our donors, uh, KPMG, as well as our sponsors, Western Union, Agenda Office Supplies, Van City, Canada Western, Canadian Western Bank, uh, Canadian Associate of Management Consultants, and Vestima Networks. Without them, this would not be possible at all. And finally, to our gracious judges, uh, over 90 of them who attended, uh, our executive team, and uh, the Royal Rose University staff, and finally, friends, and family of all the awesome participants that are out there supporting them from all the distances that they've traveled from. Thank you all, and I look forward to seeing you at the gala tonight. Thank you.